This is the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, presented by Chime. Look where we are, Houston, Texas, for the Angels taking on the Astros. You want superstars? You have superstars all over the baseball field. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Dusty Baker's Club with Alex Bregman and Carlos Correa. Correa leading off for the first time in his career. Oh, there's Albert Pujols. And I mean, you name it, there's a superstar involved with these two clubs. And we can't wait to see them battle. They are exclusively on YouTube tonight. It will be live with Matt Vaskersian calling the action with a whole bunch of friends. And we'll get you going for 30 minutes all about the Astros and the Angels. Scott Braun and Jim Tomey. So great to see you, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It's great to be back. And uh, what a game this is going to be. It's going to be uh, – it'll be a fun game to watch because, as you said, there's so many great players yep. on both sides here. And it's, uh, it's always nice to see good baseball this early in the year. I felt like when I was walking out with you just now, there would be some, you know – Walk up music or something like that. You didn't <laughs> even care what your song they was. They could do that. No, no. Whatever they played, they could play. I just tried to do the job in the batter's box. Yeah, so Jim was, was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Yeah. It all worked out. So let's see how things have worked out for these two teams yesterday. Rockies trying to strike early. Trevor's story 1 0. Treble whip it. Fair just inside the third baseline. It'll roll down onto the track. Tapia scores. They're going to send McMahon a two run double for Story. Jonathan Daza will lead off the Rockies second. Urquidy shakes off a sign. Now the 2 2 is hit well down the left field line. Hooking towards the corner, but it is gone. Touch him all time. Jonathan Daza. Mike Trout batting, two outs, no one on, no score, and he swings at the pitch and lifts a high fly ball that's carrying deep out into right field. It is Trevor here. Home run number six for Mike Trout. Power for Trout. Has home run power, can do damage. Here it comes. Deep center field. Gone! And Adolis has put the Rangers in front of the eighth inning. Five, three Rangers. And now a fresh series for these two teams. The Angels and Astros get going, and the Angels are checking in at 9-7 and seven on the year. They're just a game and a half out of first, and hey, the Oakland A's are on another planet right now. They just cannot stop. Meanwhile, the uh, Astros were off to a super fast start, and then they've fallen now a bit, 7-10. and 10. But you can see it's super competitive, Jim. They're all very close together. Yeah. And with the Angels, they still do have, you know, there's a ton of names, but they do have the best player, I would say, in Major League Baseball yeah. over the past, what, it's been like a decade now? I, I, I mean, whenever you talk about the number one and the best player in baseball, it's Mike Trout. Mm -hmm. You know, for me... I mean, he's consistent every year. He puts up great numbers. And it's here at the network. I know it's a joy for us to talk about him. So I think we're going to dive in here to a little bit. So last year, last year, obviously, what a rough year in general for everybody. Sure. And, you know, you look at, I mean, here he goes. He goes deep to center. He goes to left field here on a breaking ball. He goes to left center. Now we're going to go into this year early in April. Same thing. The leg kick. He's always in position to get ready. There's a ball out in front of the plate that he hits into the seats in deep left center. Now he goes oppo, and that tells me he stays on the ball. Interestingly, Scott, he's got a flat bat on his pre-setup, okay? When he gets back to his backside, the thing I look for is the angle, the knob of the bat to the catcher, and when the front foot hits, that's where you get that, that knob to the catcher, and that is the most powerful position a hitter can be in, and that's why Mike Trout does and is so consistent because he's so true with his mechanics every day. You know, if they said to me, hey, go do a demo on Mike Trout, 
honestly, like, you would see no flaw. There's nothing you could pick out in his swing from now to five years ago. That's how consistent he's been, and it's just been an absolute joy and pleasure to watch this guy, and it will be for the remaining, remaining of his career. We should just start messing with people and showing breakdowns of his swing and just picking random years because, like you said, it just doesn't even matter. It's always the same, yes. consistent. That's what makes him so great. And he's tough on himself, though, Jim, too. He might say, and he said in spring training, you know, I, I haven't felt completely on in a year. Yeah. He's criticizing his defense and saying he needs to get better. But that's the talk of a superstar. Well, the great players are always trying to get better. And in their mind, if they've lacked in their mind, not in baseball's mind, but in their mind, they know. They look in the mirror every day. And I'm sure Mike wanted to go home and work on some things. And you're seeing this year he looks motivated. He just had a child a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's peace every day coming home. And I look forward to watching him, you know, have a wonderful, fabulous year because he's going to. Humble human, no ego, walks around not like he's the best player on the planet. And I mention that because Mike Trout's going to be mic'd up for this game. Yeah, how about That's that? That's great. So you want to hear what Mike Trout says during a big league game? You're going to hear that live tonight on YouTube when we have it for you. And the game is about 20 minutes away. So we'll also mix in our polls. We're big on YouTube on asking you, let's keep it simple to start. Who's going to win today's game? Jim, I'll ask you later. But Angels at third place. And hey, it's so early, 9-7. and seven. The Astros at 7-10 and 10 on the year. Pay attention to the pitching matchup. Alex Cobb who uh, had to start skip just because of the way the schedule worked out going up against Christian Javier who gets called back up very talented and was part of the rookie of the year race last year in the American League. So we'll get to all of that. I'm psyched to hear Trout Trout's words during the game and then of course his actions. So right on back with us on YouTube. We'll talk to super creator on YouTube Matt Antonelli Jared Walsh of the Angels will join us and our picks to click Jim's going to tell you who's winning this one coming up. Deserves a wow. That's over to 390 sign in left center. Oh, and first pitch crushing. Oh, man. Lean into it. Here's a guy that throws the ball 101 on one half of the inning, and the next one hits the first pitch 450 feet. Oh, man. I man. mean, that ball was crushed. Wow. That was ridiculous. And Trout gets a hold of one into the corner and left. Daddy he got it! Homer's in 10 straight. Two-run shot for Trout. Matty, I'm going with you to Vegas at some point. Great call on that one. Just kind of thinking, okay, let's get that home run streak going. I mean, everything going the Halo's way tonight. Jordan Alvarez is back in the lineup. Carlos yes. Correa is going to lead things off. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Astros and Angels coming soon. Hey, if you don't know him already, get to know the name. You're going to see him tonight. Jared Walsh is hitting 327 this season with four home runs. He's knocked in 13. The OPS, that's really good. If you're not following OPS, over 1,000, Jim, that's good, right? That's pretty good, yes. <laughs> that's going to play in the major leagues. Let's talk to Jared Walsh live right now on YouTube. He joins us. Jared, how are you today, and how's the season going for you so far? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Season's been going really well and hope to keep it rolling. So, Jared, Jim Tomey here. First of all, congratulations. What a great start. Well, what a great run you've had since last year. You know, I want to dive into a little bit on the hitting end. Are you, with your cage work, are you more of a soft toss guy or are you a tee guy? And how has that helped you maintain what you've been doing since last year? 
Uh, I'll dabble in T a little bit, but more so soft toss, and then high velo is really my bread and butter. You know, you see teams like the Astros kind of started it, and the Dodgers, the high fastballs at the top of the zone. If you can't hit that, you're going to struggle. So uh, just trying to test myself every day in my work is really something that's important to me. Can you tell us more about the swing changes and just tweaks that you've made over the past year or so, simplifying things and also maybe picking a thing up or two from some of your legendary teammates? Yeah, uh, you know, getting to watch these guys on a daily basis is just unbelievable. You know, seeing Trout, Rendon, Pujols, those guys approach on a daily basis has been huge for me. So, uh, you know, having that ability to lay off a tough 3-2 pitch and take your walk is, is something that I want to continue to work towards. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. I just felt like if I could get on top of the ball and hit a few more line drives, that would really help me at the big league level, and that's what's happened. So uh, something that I'm really happy with. So, Jared, have you noticed since last year, especially this year, are the pitchers doing anything different with you as far as you making adjustments to to a year ago from now? Uh, yeah, I would say a lot less first pitch fastballs right down the middle, unfortunately. So uh, <laughs> hopefully they get back into that soon. <laughs> yeah. Also, Jared, I mean, we go back to when you were drafted, and I actually I remember when you said this, 39th round, 2015, out of Georgia, and you called yourself almost Mr. Irrelevant. I mean, what was <laughs> yeah, that experience yeah. like for you? I mean, hey, we're going late in the draft, and how much do you take that with you even into games like today? Because, you know, you were overlooked by a lot of teams, frankly. Yeah, it sticks with me a little bit, but there's really nothing to be bitter about. You know, uh, I'm here in the big leagues. I get to play with a bunch of future Hall of Famers and, you know, get to play in a great division, live in Southern California. So uh, no reason to cry over spilled milk. So, Jared, we read that you're a Steelers fan. Uh, describe who made you a Steelers fan and who is your all-time favorite favorite Steeler. Oh, goodness. That's a tough question. I'd probably have to say Heinz Ward and a uh, huge Steeler fan. When I was a kid, we had season tickets. We lived in Georgia but would fly to Pittsburgh for Steeler games. So my parents, you know, huge Pittsburgh sports fan. So what an experience that was growing up. What's that like in the clubhouse, too? Because I, I know your, your friend – and superstar teammate Mike Trout thinks that the Philadelphia Eagles are a pretty big deal. I know he talks about them a lot. So what's, what's it like inside the clubhouse with guys rooting for some of their squads? You know, once September rolls around and the football is coming on every Sunday, the clubhouse gets pretty rowdy because everybody's got their team and their fantasy team. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of smack talk goes on about all sports. So uh, it's something that's that kind of, you know, keeps a tough season easy to go through a lot of failure in this game so anytime you can have fun with your teammates and have a little banter back and forth it's good can you give me an example of whether it's today when you walk into the clubhouse or just something in the past week that an exchange that you have with you know name it mike trout anthony rendon shohei otani justin upton something casual something that you know someone watching at home at youtube can just say all right these are normal dudes because we look at them as such superstars in their own way shohei otani of course overseas for a long time and now coming to a major league baseball over the past few years as a two-way player like we've never seen and then also you know poo holes and what he's done so just give me like a common phrase that someone might say to you common phrase i don't know if i have that um i was able to grab a steak and a glass of wine with shohei which i would assume you know that's everybody's dream especially those growing up in japan so you know getting to meet people from all over the world just to play baseball is has been really special you know doesn't matter if you speak spanish japanese english we're all friends inside the clubhouse well and you have something in common with otani you can throw the baseball from the mound pretty well too jared so have, did, have you guys discussed that and and can you tell the youtube fans about your experiences on the mounds and if we'll see that again at some point Yes, I was a brief two-way player, but <laughs> pitching hurts, so I don't do it anymore. And he and I don't really talk about pitching, mostly hitting. How much, though, could that have helped you as a hitter? Do you ever think about you know, the mind of a pitcher when you have been on the mound in, in big moments and what guys are trying to throw at you? And like you mentioned earlier, hey, he's, he's not getting Peter's first pitch right down the pipe anymore. They, they know about you, Jared. But how can your pitcher brain um, from your experiences help you as a hitter? Uh, just remember that everyone's human, you know, it's you're never going to be perfect. So 
I wouldn't say put too much pressure on yourself because, I mean, I'm sure Tommy can speak to this. Sometimes you'll get a bitch right down the middle and you just pop it up, you know. So uh, uh, don't give anybody too much credit. Just play your game. Have a little fun. So, Jared, for me, I got one more question. Who had the biggest influence on you from either the youth level, high school level as you were coming up, or maybe it was your dad? Who had the biggest influence on you for baseball? My mom, Lisa Walsh. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad had cancer, so he had to get a surgery uh, and wasn't able to throw anymore. So my mom threw me batting practice. My parents drove me all over the southeast to travel baseball games, you know, help pay for my college. Just can't say enough about him. That is awesome. That's, That's great. That is really cool, Jared. And last one on my end for the big time pregame meal. And if you're that kind of guy, what are you doing before games? Are you going real heavy or are you keeping it light? What are you eating before a game like today? You know, I've done a terrible job at answering almost any question that you've asked me so far. <laughs> uh, I would say the venti cold brew from Starbucks is kind of what I need pregame rolling up to the field. So food, not necessarily, but I need a little caffeine running through my veins. You're way too hard on yourself. You did great. You were awesome, Jared. <laughs> you were great. First time talking to you, and I'm sure it won't be the last. And congrats on your success so far, and good luck in this game tonight and then the rest of the way this season. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. He is cleaning up in the lineup tonight and well caffeinated. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Chime is under 15 minutes away. It is time for our YouTube creator spotlight. He's a former big leaguer. He's a former first round pick and he's been on the YouTube game for a long time. The channel is Antonelli Baseball. Matt Antonelli not only played in the bigs, not only went through the college ranks and the farm system, but then afterwards said, you know what? I'm going to go over instructional videos, mechanics, also give you a little taste of what it's like to be a big leaguer and let's chat with Matt right now Matt how are you and I will start by saying I drafted you in my minor league fantasy draft about 15 years ago so I've been following your career all the way back pretty much when it started as far as a pro well, thank you so much. It's great to be here. And like I said earlier, I could have disappointed you. There was a few good years in there, but a couple of bad ones as well. So sorry about that. Hey, I'll take the ups and downs, the development. And you learned, of course, a ton going through that system and then have been sharing with the world what you went through as a minor leaguer, what you've learned. So let's just start there with the channel. Where did the idea come from and did you ever think it would get to this point where there are so many people benefiting from what you're doing? No, not at all. I started my YouTube channel actually while I was playing. I always had a vision of myself coaching one day and it started a little bit earlier than I probably expected. But I was able to learn a lot during my playing career, I played for five different teams and uh, played for a, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great managers and just took bits and pieces from all of them and was able to pass that along. One of my passions is really, you know, passing that information along to young kids and helping them improve their game. So I've been lucky to do that over the last few years. Let's go over feedback and views. What's just pick out one of your hottest videos that you've ever had, which one really racked up the views and is there a reason why? Well, I think the YouTube channel really took off when I started to give some insight into my playing career, both at the minor league and the major league level. Um, and I, I think probably even more minor league stuff than the major league stuff. I think a lot of fans and people in general don't exactly know how the minor leagues work. So a lot of those popular ones were, you know, how much do minor leaguers get paid and, and what's it like coming up through the ranks. And so those are probably the most popular ones. But really anything talking about the game of baseball uh, has been enjoyable for me and I think it's been pretty popular. Yeah, let's let's go over the getting paid thing. Just, just specifically, we joke and chat about it here at MLB Network, some other hosts, um, about how it looks in the bank account. I don't need numbers or anything. I want to more know, you know, when you were playing for the Padres, does it pop up in direct deposit or on the check? Like, hey, Padres, or what's that looking like? 
Well, when I signed, I didn't know how to write a check. I didn't have any money. I, I didn't know anything. So I believe it was put right into my account. Um, but some of my favorite stories when I got drafted, and luckily I was signed pretty high, so I had a pretty good signing bonus. But a lot of players aren't that fortunate. And uh, I used to talk with people all the time, and they say, you know, how much are you getting paid in the minor leagues? A couple million dollars? And I'd say, yeah, I think I made about 5000 last year. And most couldn't believe me. So, um, uh, like I said, a lot of misconceptions. But, hey, once you get to the big leagues, uh, it makes up for all those small checks <laughs> that you get paid in the minors. Yeah, the big bucks, the big names, too. So, tell the world, if they don't know already, who your first career knock was off of. So my first career hit was off of Greg Maddox. Um, so I can tell the grandkids and my kids about that. And uh, it's funny, I was pretty nervous going into that game as I'm sure most players are making their debut. Uh, I got, I was hitting eighth in the order, so I didn't get to hit the first inning. I played defense, had a ground ball hit to me. First batter of the game, Russell Martin hit me a ball. And I fielded that ball, made the throw to first, and all of a sudden I felt like this calmness come over me. So thankfully I did that before I got in the box because when I did hit, uh, it, it, it honestly felt like another, just another at bat for me. I uh, got a fastball, hit a single to center field, rounded first base, and said, man, that's pretty easy. I think I'm going to get like 3,000 more of these. And I think I had like 11 or 12 more hits in my career. So I was a little off on my predict, uh, prediction. Um, but, yeah, to be able to get a hit off of him, a Hall of Famer, uh, something I'll always remember. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's great video. And, of course, I'm glad that we have it. Let's finish with this. Uh, any comments or feedback, whether it's just something crazy or silly or something – from a fan or somebody that's been impacted saying, hey, you really helped me with my career. Any kind of feedback that you've received on, fee uh, on YouTube that you can share with us? Sure. I think one of the most rewarding things for me is the feedback. And it's not just, you know, helping kids in America, but helping really players all over the world. And the power of the Internet and YouTube is amazing. I, I talk with, with parents, with coaches, with kids from literally every part of the world, pretty much every day I receive emails and, and different comments on our social media platforms. And so um, just being able to take a little bit of something that I learned, and I understand how hard this game is and how it can be frustrating at times because it is a game of failure, being able to give those players some hope and maybe just something small that helps them you know, improve a little bit and uh, and get through the next game or the next practice. And so that really is what uh, gets me motivated and keeps me doing what I'm doing. Matt, you've been crushing it, and I've been calling these games uh, for YouTube for years now and seeing you in the live chat with your commentary. Looking forward to seeing you during this game as well. And a pleasure speaking to you person to person for the first time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. He's great. You'll see his comments in the live chat. Hey, you're going to have superstars, power, athleticism. I also want to mention contact. Jose Iglesias, David Fletcher is incredible in that department. Same with Michael Brantley. Contact specialist, some of the best contact hitters, and they've got pop too, in all of Major League Baseball, in all of the planet. Angels Astros is just five minutes away, and we'll do our picks to click in a moment. This ball hit hard again. Michael Brantley, home run for the third straight opening day. It? Every year as an Astro, Michael Brantley has hit a home run. Uncle Mike. That's what other teams are saying, uncle on yeah, opening day. They're saying Mike, uncle. Alex uh -oh. Bregman on a 2-2 pitch. Drives one deep to left field. That ball's gone. Back to back jacks. Brantley and Bregman. And the Astros now lead 5-1. to one. Back to back. Jordan sends one in the air to center field. Well hit, going all the way back to the wall. That ball is gone! The big man, Jordan Alvarez, hits one to left center field, a three-run shot. And the Astros take a 5-1 to one lead. There we go. We got liftoff. That is not an easy pitch to get. And that's out on the outside corner, and Jordan stays on it, steps on it, and drives it.
You're watching the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Chime. Carlos Correa is leading off. First time in his career. That's going to be fun, Jim. Yeah, I like that. I mean, you know, obviously the athleticism is there. He can run. And sometimes, like, sometimes moving a guy up the leadoff or even as your club can spark you and get you going. I like it. We'll see how that looks. And now I got a bunch more questions for you. It's Picks to Click presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. So let's run through things. And also, just for the YouTube crowd to understand, you're going to have plenty of poll questions coming your way during this game. So, Jim, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So what's number one here? Let's start with... Other than Mike Trout, okay, so you can't pick the guy we're about to see. Who would be your pick for AL MVP? I'm going to go Jose Abreu, winning it back-to-back. -back. I love when you look at the whole dynamic of his game, the team he's on, they have a chance to win, and his work ethic, I like 60 RBIs in 60 games was impressive. Yeah. You know, what a, what a great player, and uh, it's fun to watch him. I'm going Jose Abreu. That's a great call. So you think he can do it back to back? I do. I like it. Okay, now I want you to focus on this game in particular, okay? So the over-under for tonight's game, total runs, is eight and a half. Are you going up or down? In a, I'm going to go under. Yeah? I'm going to go down, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, the, the pitching matchup, Cobb and... Uh, Christian and, Javier. And, and Christian you Javier. Like those two? Yeah, I do. I do. You know, Christian Javier's got the really good slider curveball. And then this thing Cobb throws as the thing. That's the, the thing. hybrid split changeup. Uh-huh. You know, I watching him the first series, I think, against the White Sox, he had that that ball was really moving. And uh, it'll be, I think it's gonna be under for sure. I mean, and it plays to what we've been seeing the last few years, especially just less fastballs and more right. relying on, and we've seen that from Cobb, more relying on the thing, and we'll see that uh, at play. Okay, what about um, your favorite in the American League West? Because this division looks like yeah. pretty much anyone's game at this point. Not because of the way they're playing right now, but Oakland is a team you always have to watch. They do everything fundamentally sound. They pitch well. They do. They hit good with two strikes. As they progress during the year, they're always a club to watch. And for some reason, I think they're going to win the West, no doubt. Did you fall for the slow start from the A's? Because it was rough. I mean, what, they were 1-7 to start the season? Yeah, well, you know, and, and I don't – look, look, you can't win a championship in April, but you can sure put yourself behind. But it's how you bounce back from those from those bad times. And I think the overall, the years that, that Oakland has done this, there's confidence, and Melvin, I think, does a fabulous job for them, and he always has them ready to play. One more quick one for you. Who's going to win the American League? I like the White Sox. I yeah. like their bullpen. I like their starting pitching. I think there's another club that as they keep doing this, as they climb during this long grind of 162, I think that bullpen and that and that starting pitching will uh, will put them in a position to win the American League. Yeah, young but still has that veteran mix. Yes. And you mentioned Abreu. You're all in on the White Sox. I, like I love the White Sox, and I I just think they're built right now for major success. All right. And so uh, we have the answer to the poll question that we ran through for you earlier. And Angels fans going big tonight. Jim, who's going to win today's game? And they say Alex Cobb and Mike Trout and Albert Pujols and Shohei Otani and company and Jared Walsh, our guest from earlier. So well, who's your pick for this? I'm going to go. I'm going to go the Angels. Yeah? I think. Yeah, I think when Trout's hot right now, Otani as well and this this pitch that Cobb I look forward to seeing this tonight he <laughs> he's very crafty and he knows how to pitch it should be an all-around great game so you heard it here from Jim low scoring game ish and Angels are taking it by the way as we're under a minute from taking you to the broadcasters for this one uh, live on YouTube Angels and Astros I'll just I'll, I'll put this in a, like a super plug early tease Jim and I will be calling next week's game yes Indians and twins live on YouTube Latroy Hawkins is going to join us as well just really we'll two of the nicest humans on the planet I'm going to speak for you <laughs> thank okay? you yeah thank we're going to have a lot of fun and Latroy is such a great dude too yeah 
It's going to be yeah. great. So we'll hang again next week. We'll but do. for now, it's all about the Houston Astros and the Los Angeles Angels. And as you can see, Alex Bregman's in there tonight for Houston. Astros are trying to get back on the winning side of things. It's been a minute. Slow start for this team. Mike Trout, what are you saying right now? Well, guess what? We're going to know what he's saying during the game. He will be mic'd up. You'll hear plenty of sounds from the greatest player on the planet. Have fun. Enjoy the game. Downtown Houston, where the only positive thing to come out of the pandemic is no traffic in a big, sprawling downtown community. Ready for baseball from the Space City tonight. Welcome to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, presented by Chime. Tonight, from Minute Maid Park, a battle in the AL West between the Los Angeles Angels and the homestanding Houston Astros. And welcome to a worldwide audience on YouTube tonight. About a game and a half separating the Astros and Angels in the AL West. Too early to make any determinations about teams trending upward or downward in a very competitive division. We can't tell you this. The Astros are happy to be home after a rough road trip in which they lost four out of five, culminating in a frozen loss yesterday, playing in the coldest temperatures ever for an Astros team in Denver. And the Angels, on the other hand, happy to be out on the road. They're happy to be anywhere off to a great start. The Angels opening a 10-game road trip with their first of this four-game series in Houston. little note on what you're watching tonight. This is the second of 21 live Major League Baseball games exclusively presented on YouTube. Can't watch this one anywhere else. It streams live globally on MLB's YouTube channel for free. Almost 3 million fans subscribe to MLB's YouTube channel. And click the bell icon to receive notifications prior to upcoming games. This is going to be a lot of fun for me tonight uh, because I'm working alongside two guys who know these teams intimately, two guys who've each won a World Series ring, uh, two guys who both played in the big leagues for 15 years. I'm the only guy, by the way, on this telecast without a World Series ring or a pocket kerchief tonight. We say hello to Mark Gubiza and Jeff Blum. Hey, Gooby, let's start with you and dig in on the Angels. It's powered by a couple of guys, their drive that is, who are off to blazing starts, Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. And for Mike Trout, yeah, we know about the accomplishments, right? A closet full of trophies and awards. The only thing miss missing is a commissioner's trophy in here. AL Rookie of the Year, twice an All-Star Game MVP, a room full of Silver Slugger awards, and three, three MVPs. He's gotten off to good starts in the past, Gooby, as you've watched over the years. This year is one of his best. Yeah, Matt, it's been unbelievable for him. His batting average just under 400. His on-base percentage at 507. The slugging percentage leading Major League Baseball. And he's shown a lot of enthusiasm. He's got a couple big key hits, as he normally does for the Angels, but he's pumping his fist. He's totally into getting to this team on his back, getting into the postseason. All those questions in spring were, are you going to get to the postseason? He's saying right now, I'm going to deliver the numbers, and he has so far for the Halos this season. Take a look at this. I mean, to those that suggest Mike Trout hasn't played long in this enough to be a Hall of Famer right now, uh, we offer this to contend with that thought. Through 1,268 games, that's where Trout is right now. Look at the career comparison. This grabs your attention. Yeah, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. is a contemporary. I remember facing him a number of times and seeing the enthusiasm, the defense in center field, but the numbers and how he could carry a club. Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr. compared to Mike Trout. He knows that's a lot of pressure, but he's thriving on that pressure being put on him. Jeff, let's talk about the Astros. Pardon the Old West pun, but last year as defending AL champs, it was the not okay corral in the Space City. The regular season was not a good one. Justin Verlander, uh, arm injury and made one start. Injuries cost Jordan Alvarez what would have been his follow up to his uh, rookie of the year campaign the prior season. Carlos Correa not himself last year in the regular season. Same with Jose Altuve yet despite all that they turned it on in the fall and came within one game of another World Series appearance. 
Jeff, you watch this team every day. There's just too much talent here for them to stay cold for very much longer. Yeah, and Carlos Correa has lead the way for me because he is one of those guys that is going to be a part of that massive free agent uh, shortstop class at the end of the season. Expect him to have a big year, but Jordan Alvarez, getting him back in that lineup full time is going to be a nice power source for Dusty Baker to insert in there and hopefully drive in runs. You see these 60 extra base hits in his first 100 career games is legendary already, but this guy right here, Dr. Smooth, we call him Uncle Mike in Houston, just because he has been so reliable in what he does both statistically and what he brings to that clubhouse. He is really a guy that can give them some comfort during some tumultuous times. This vintage of Astros baseball is really an elite team. They are one of only five clubs to reach an LCS in four or more consecutive postseasons. And looking for big things once again today. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight for this one. Uh, not only are we with you for uh, innings one through nine and then post game show, we have a fourth member of our broadcast crew tonight as well as we say good evening to Brett Dolan. Thanks, Matty. Well, Astros general manager James Click before the season said he needed his superstars to play like superstars for this to be a successful season. Well, to say the least, in the first week, things worked out well. Houston won six of its first seven games. The team was scoring more than seven runs a contest. The earned run average was very low, but things have changed and changed in a rather dramatic fashion. The Strohs have lost nine of ten games. You barely recognize their OPS and the team ERA has gone way up. Now of course this does come with an explanation. The Astros had five players put in a COVID protocol. Jordan Alvarez, Martin Maldonado, Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve. They got four back just in time to play in freezing cold temperatures and snow flurries in Denver Colorado but still no Altuve yet. So Dusty Baker was asked yesterday whether or not he has addressed this slow start with this team or if he's held a team meeting. He said I need all my team to meet to hold a meeting meaning Altuve who could be several more games. So the team is back. They're out of the snow. It's the first of eight games at home and hopeful that Dusty can get his team back the way they were playing in that first week of the season. Matty. Uh, Brett thanks and the warm weather of Houston Texas never looked so good to a chilly group of Astros yesterday in Denver when we come back it's time for lineups and the opening pitch the Angels and Astros are coming up next bottom of the seventh inning the Angels trailing it five to nothing they put the rally monkey up on the scoreboard and this place went berserk they've had so many rallies this year do they have another one left in them. Swing at a high drive, deep to right, to the wall, and it's gone! A home run! It's Fizio has made it a two-run game. The Angels are breathing and right back into it. There's a swing, a long drive, deep to right. It is gone! Darren Erstad with a home run. It is a one-run game. The never-say-die Angels giving their fans a thrill down the stretch. And it bounced left field in the gap. Here comes Biggins. Here comes Anderson. The Angels take the lead, six to five. We are one strike away from a game seven. The two-two pitch. Swung on and missed. Oh, what a ball game! And the Anaheim Angels are still breathing. We are going to game seven incredibly. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Chime with Mark Gubiza at Angel Stadium. Jeff Blum and Brett Dolan at Minute Maid Park. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Great to have a worldwide audience along with us tonight. Welcome to the future, gentlemen. Live baseball on YouTube. You can only watch the Angels and Astros right here tonight. Let's take a look at Joe Madden's Angels lineup to kick off this four game series presented by Chime. Fletcher Otani and Trout out of the gate Mike Trout opened his season with a homer against the Astros and he hasn't stopped Walsh Upton and Pujols bat four through six Iglesias Rojas and Suzuki rounded out uh, the Angels Mark Gubiza I'll start this with you lead the American League in homers along with a red hot Oakland A's team and it's Trout that leads the way in that category. 
just absolutely crushing the baseball 393 with six home runs and 12 RBIs going against a very tough pitcher Christian Javier he's got a fastball 92 96 four seam fastball upstairs slider very good slider curveball and changeup so far this season this is a 2.08 ERA in eight and two thirds look at those strikeout numbers five to one as far as strikeouts to walks. Yeah Blummer uh, Javier was down at the alternate site. This is his first big league start in a couple of weeks but that was all by design we understand. Yeah it definitely was the Astros had the luxury of having some days off in there so they've been able to send Christian Javier out continue to throw down in that alternate site. They expect him to give the Astros about five or six innings if everything goes accordingly and like Mark Gubas has said that four seam fastball is very good. The Astros like spin rate and this is one of their spin rate kings. Let's take a look at the uh, Astros defensively brought to you by Chime and Nash American League low seven errors in their 17 games. Nice tight defensive unit here Blumber. Is, uh, is it is it range and athleticism and flashy plays or are they kind of more a workman like defensive group. They've got a little bit of both. They can do it with the flash, especially a guy like Carlos Correa, who's a legit six foot four, six foot five at shortstop. Shows great range, but you got to keep in mind the Astros highly analytical. They'll shift these guys and put them in even better positions to make plays. Underway on YouTube tonight with the first pitch of the game by Javier in for strike one. David Fletcher, Shohei Otani, and Mike Trout for the visiting Angels. The numbers on Javier's last start by the way and it was two weeks ago to the day five shutout innings in a six to two victory struck out seven allowed only three base hits and, and Gooby guys like this fascinate people like me because he's not throwing ninety eight ninety nine miles an hour yet he can still make good fastball hitters swing and miss. Yeah it's a disappearing four seamer with spin on the upper third of the strike zone. Ball and two strikes to David Fletcher. Good take by Fletcher on that slider, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Blummer, I, I've got to recalibrate to your sense of humor, man. I haven't spent cons I have not spent substantial time with you in the better part of about uh, 12 years. The strikeout for Javier. How about the chime breakdown on tonight's Astros starter Gooby. My three key points for him is controlling that upper third of the strike zone with his four seamer very good as far as getting swing and miss and pop ups and finish with a slider six strikeouts a 100 batting average versus slider this year and better second time through zero 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 first time through second time through 462 batting average against Javier this season second time the hitters get to see him. Shohei Otani now with one away to start the night. Otani has had a cartoonish start to the 2021 season. All over the Statcast leaderboard in terms of exit velocity with a bat in his hands and plain old pitch velocity when he's out on the mound. One and one. Well he could generate some bat speed. I'll tell you what it's incredible what he does when he puts the ball in play. You can see the Astros right handed uh, right, right side overload as uh, Blum talked about a moment ago. Jeff do they do they switch primarily for uh, for right handed batters. I read, sorry for left handed batters or is it on both sides of the plate that they'll go into that shift. Yeah you know what when they have Altuve in the lineup they won't shift as heavily to the pull side on right handed hitters just because it's a little bit longer throw for a guy like Jose Altuve but when they have a left handed hitter up there they will shift drastically to that pull side on the right side of the field like you see on your screen. Two balls and two strikes to Otani. Can I just say how envious I am of Mark Gubaza and his his ability to watch guys like Mike Trout Shohei Otani on a regular basis it's nice to see him 19 times a year but I can't imagine what it's like watching athletes of this caliber in baseball right now as often as Gooby does two strikeouts start the game for Christian Javier 
You know, guys, it's almost like watching Bo Jackson together with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, their skills. <laughs> Pretty nasty changeup. So two gone, a couple of punch outs start tonight, and now Mike Trout, who gets here red hot. Five for his last eight. Huge numbers to start the year. Six big boys, 12 RBIs. Javier understandably trying to work him away, missing with a slider, a ball, and no strikes. Trout's homered in back to back games entering the series. If Vegan Homer tonight, it would already be the second time this year that he would have homered in three straight. When these two teams split their opening series in Anaheim, Trout homered in the opener in the Angels 7 6 win. Astros come back and even it up the following night with a victory that included a big homer by Carlos Correa. Javier's fallen behind three Trout. balls and no strikes. Trout doesn't swing a 3-0 all that often, but he has been more aggressive 3-0 this year. Oh. Three and one. Well, you know, to Blummer's point a moment ago, the, the cartoony numbers for Trout, when he's ahead in the count since the start of the 2019 season, he's got an OPS of 1,700. Oof. And there's ball four. So Trout's aboard with two gone, and that'll bring up Jared Walsh with a big opportunity. He, too, starts the series hot. He's hit safely in five straight games, a 5-for-15 run to wrap up the homestand. And of all the known commodities on the Angels, guys like Trout, Upton, Pujols, Jared Walsh is the guy that might sneak up on the casual fan, but that's not to suggest that he's not every bit as good as that aforementioned list of blue blooders. And he takes a strike. I'm actually kind of curious to see this matchup between Christian Javier, who has that good fastball in the upper portion of the zone. Jared Walsh has the reputation of being very good on hitting the fastball and driving it. Ball on a strike. Yeah, he's hit the four seam fastball at a 400 clip this year. So, in Javier throws a lot of four seam fastballs upstairs about 60% of the time, both of his four seamers. So, good matchup. You're right, Blumber, about this one Walsh versus Javier tonight. Trout aboard with two gone underway in the top half of the first, and it's a ball and a strike to Jared Walsh. A snap throw down to first, and Trout never got too far off the bag. Hey, here's what you guys are talking about. Walsh against the elevated heater. His slugging percentage since 2020, 619. But if you go up top, that 696 slugging percentage is seventh best in baseball, and the guys ahead of him are the guys you'd expect to be on that list. Nelson Cruz, Matt Chapman, Xander Bogarts likes the high gas. And he lays off three balls and a strike. But the interesting thing about that, you're talking about right-handed batters. Not many left-handed batters prefer fastballs elevated. They usually lower third of the strikes down to do their damage. Three balls and a strike to count to Jared Walsh. Full count now. Challenged him. Yeah, that's that stealth heater, right? I mean, it. it's the kind of fastball that you, you watch a guy take a swing and a miss at, and on his way back to the bench, he's looking out to the mound thinking, how did I not, how did I not hit that? 
Yeah, I'm sure Gooby could speak to it a little bit better, but the spin rate, even on the fastball, it, it will plane out. It won't have the usual effect that gravity will pulling the ball down in the zone, and he gets a lot of swings underneath. Just like that. Three strikeouts, nothing comes to the two out walk underway in Houston tonight. Mike Trout batting, two outs, no one on, no score, and he swings at the pitch and lifts a high fly ball that's carrying deep out into right field. It is Trout here! Home run number six for Mike Trout. Damage, first pitch, power for Trout. Otani hitting 304. Shohei Otani hits a high fly ball to right field. To the wall! Goodbye! A little showtime in the daytime. Garcia has home run power, can do damage. Here it comes. Ooh, that ball well struck. High in the air. Deep center field. Gone! Garcia again! And Adolis has put the Rangers in front of the eighth inning. He doesn't mess around with the excitement and the celebration, and this is tremendous power. So here's Lowe at the plate. Ooh, that ball pretty well struck. Out to right field. That one is gone. Back-to-back -back home runs. Big insurance run, and it makes it 5-3 Rangers. Back from Minute Maid Park, let's take a look at Dusty Baker's lineup card for the first of four with the Angels. The Astros chime starting lineup tonight. Carlos Correa will sit atop the lineup card for the first time in his career. Dusty desperate to generate a little offense tonight. Brantley's been good. He bats second in left field. Breckman, Alvarez, and Gurriel, three through five. Kyle Tucker in right. Aledmus Diaz, Miles Straw, and Martin Maldonado, the former Angel round things out it's Alex Cobb on the mound for the third time as an angel his attempt at a third start about a week ago was a scratch because of a series lost against the Minnesota Twins so it's been a while for Alex as well his last start back on the 12th of April a really good one that night Mark Gubas 10 strikeouts at Kansas City had a nasty split work in that Ooh. night and his fastball velocity is picked up. He's been touching 95 miles per hour. Also, a good swing and miss curveball as well. A ball and a strike to the leadoff hitter, Carlos Correa. Yeah, leading off tonight. Blummer, we talked to Dusty Baker about that before the game. And uh, Dusty, while always optimistic, is kind of ready to shake things up a little bit tonight for his guys. Yeah, he's got to do something. The Astros one and nine in their last ten games. Having base runners on has been an issue, but they need somebody to ignite this thing. Jose Altuve, when he was in there, was hitting 318 at the top of that lineup, and having Miles Straw move into that top spot didn't work out. And Straw seemed like the logical go-to as far as filling that space at the top of the order because of the speed. It was just the inability to get on base and get things going for this powerful offense in the middle of this lineup. An Astros lineup that hit just 176 during the recently completed five game trip. Dusty's creeping up on a milestone win. We'll talk about that as we get going here tonight. Still a ball and two strikes on Carlos Correa. Weird statistical profile for the Astros plumber. They they don't strike out. They're around middle of the pack in a lot of the major offensive categories slug OPS homers. But there's not any traction at all with this lineup at this stage of the schedule. It is a team that relies heavily on scoring runs via the home run. And usually with that high on base percentage, you start to see those two run, three run home runs where they can really ambush a pitcher and put up some big squiggly numbers per inning and give their pitchers a little bit of a cushion. But here recently in this last 10, ten game stretch, it has been hitting with runners in scoring position where they're hitting around 163 in their last 10 games. And the inability to drive in runs has been a real issue. 
Full count to Correa. Here's the payoff pitch home. And Carlos squares up on a ball and sends it into center. Dies for Trout. And the first out is in the books for Alex Cobb. Gooby, let's break him down tonight. Yeah, I think got to be careful on the first pitch. 375 batting average against him this year, 368 in his career. And swing and misses with a split. 13 strikeouts with a splitter this year. And ground ball action for Alex Cobb. 58.6% ground balls this year for Alex Cobb. To go to work on Michael Brantley now, who, along with Yuri Gurriel, has been the only kind of consistently hey. reliable bat for Dusty Baker to start the year. And Brantley takes a strike. Michael just over 300 for the season, right around where his career average sits, not ironically. He's never really had good looks at Alex Cobb over the years, just one for 10. I'll make it one for 11 as Iglesias makes the play for the second out. Let's take a look at the, the arsenal for him, Gooby, via StatCast 3D. Yeah, his power sinking fastball will get a lot of ground balls, but man, he throws a lot of splitters. 45.4% in his knuckle curve. You look where every one of those pitches are at for the most part, lower third. If you're a hitter for the Astros, that's where you're tracking, lower third of the strike zone. Thirty three year old right hander going back to work on Alex Bregman now who takes the first pitch out to right field and drops it in for a base hit. What was that you're saying about uh, batting average on the first pitch earlier. <laughs> That's your best chance of getting a fastball over the middle of the plate and just try to put it in play. Little inside out approach for Alex Bregman on a fastball inner half gets up a base hit. Stolen base spread as well. Hey, Blumber, is, is that a coincidence? I mean, is Alex Bregman the kind of guy that would have known that information coming into the start? Yes, 100%. The Astros do a very good job of getting that information to these guys, and they do adhere to it. Troy Snicker and Alex Cintron, the two hitting coaches for the Houston Astros, are very good about getting that information to those guys. So Bregman's aboard, and here's Jordan Alvarez. Two thousand nineteen AL rookie of the year two homers for him to start this season and back in the starting lineup for the first time since April 13th tonight. Oh. Alvarez one of the Astros bummer that you mentioned sidelined while going through the health and safety protocols limited to pinch hitting duty in Denver and good to have him back out there tonight. Yeah he really burst onto the scene in 2019 with some prodigious power but it was pretty amazing to watch him hit above 300 also that season so he did a great job of strike zone recognition getting some pitches to drive and when he barrels them up they have a tendency to go a very long way. It's going to be interesting to see the timing for some of these hitters like Bregman Alvarez Maldonado who came off that injured list. Thing swung on and missed. That's what uh, that's what Alex Cobb calls his split change hybrid pitch. Well, how about the company he's keeping on this list? First 100 career games, most extra base hits. Only Joe DiMaggio had more. Quick throw to first is closer than it should have been. A ball and two strikes on Jordan Alvarez. I know the Astros don't run a lot. Like they used to, but the Rangers just in town against the Angels. That was a, an effort by the Angels to give Kurt Suzuki a better chance of throwing out runners by holding the ball and quicker to first base on their moves. And yeah, neither one of these teams run a lot. I mean, nobody runs a lot, let's face it. But four total bases, four stolen bases, that is for the Astros. Uh, the Angels with five, two of the smaller totals in all the game. I mean outside of a few individual players Ramon Laureano Tim Anderson we could name I guess a couple. The, the league doesn't run anymore. Thing coming up here split change. No. Or was it and one that just caught too much of the plate. First and third with two gone. What was that, Gooby? 
God, that was a fastball. He tried to sneak one down. And when you look at the numbers this year for Alvarez versus Sinker, 083. He went with a fast. No, it ended up being a splitter. They kind of got around it. Sometimes it'll cut like a slider. Got too much to the plate. That's why I thought it was a fastball. It's flat. Right back up the middle. Good swing by Rudon Alvarez. Not trying to pull that. No, Gooby, you're right. That split flattened out a little bit. And Jordan, you could see him leaking over the outside corner, had to pull his hands in to get that. But I'm even more impressed with the fact that Alex Bregman went 180 feet from first to third. That shows me his legs are looking pretty good. So a little two out micro rally developing here for Houston. Now it's Yuli Guriel. Off to the best start of any Astros hitter in 2021. Alex Brakeman had some issues in spring training with some hamstrings. He said he put on about 15, 20 pounds, and that time on the injured list may have done him a little bit of good moving around well going first to third. That's a good sign for Astro fans. Three balls and no strikes to count to Yuli Guriel, who is the only Astro hitter that has walked more than he struck out to start the year. Left handed hitting right fielder Kyle Tucker waiting next and Guriel in a 3 0 count. <laughs> Cobb gets a call on a high fastball. It's actually a really good yeah, pitch to Yuli. He has been struggling a little bit this year with that fastball inside. Yeah, I've seen him over the years really good as far as hitting the ball hard to right field against the Angels, especially when it's out over the plate. Suzuki sets up out there, and the pitch to Guriel's called for a strike. It's a pretty nasty combo to get back in this count. Yeah, inside corner, outside corner. What do we see next year, Gooby? Now what? Play along with I, us. I'm. I'm going with the split. I'm going with the thing right here. I lost him with another knuckle curve. And that has loaded the bases. All right, so how much of this, Gooby, is the fact that Alex Cobb missed his last start, and it's been a good uh, 10 days since he's been out there? I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Matt. The worst thing you can have for a sinker ball pitcher, especially with a split as well, is be too strong on the mound because you're going to overthrow. You've seen a couple fastballs already, the upper third of the strike zone. He feels too strong. I know it sounds odd, but the stronger you feel as a sinker ball pitcher, the worse you are because it's going to flatten out as far as your movement on your fastball. Huge opportunity for Kyle Tucker, who is probably the happiest of any Astro to be off that dreadful trip through Seattle and Denver. One for 16 on the recently completed five gamer. He's got the bases loaded with Baseball. two guns. Baseball is an amazing game. It will put you in spots when you've been struggling like this where the bases are loaded two outs and your team needs a big hit to get things going back home in their home ballpark. Bregman Alvarez and Gurriel aboard with two gone and a first pitch thing is swung on and missed. Those are the career bases loaded numbers for Tucker this year two for twenty one with runners in scoring position. It's almost Pat Tabler like numbers for bases loaded for Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh and two. Uh, for the uninitiated Pat Tabler who had a good career was a completely different player with the bases loaded. And I mean that as, as a positive. Yeah, he always told me he would be a 500 hitter if they didn't give an error to Edgar Martinez at third base against Randy Johnson a couple of I mean a number of years ago. So he was that good, just under 500 in his career with the bases loaded. Oh, and two to Tucker. Because we're super reliant on technology on a night like tonight, where the three of us are all in different locations. And I'm trying to track pitches on my computer here in the studio. Um, my eyeballs tell me, Gooby, more knuckle curves than split changes so far 
for Alex Cobb. So far, you're exactly right on that. Surprising. It's a feel for him on this on his splitter right now. The thing he's frustrated as he delivered that one well out of the strike zone. He wants to make it tantalizing enough for a hitter to chase out of the strike zone. But when it starts that low, you're not going to get chases. You know what, Gooby's exactly right. When you've got a guy with a good split in your mind, you're trying to zone that pitch up. If you see it down out of the hand, it, you should tell yourself to lay off it. If it's low, let it go. There's one, a good one that he makes Tucker swing over the top of. So the strikeout gets him out of a bases loaded two out jam. We go to the second scoreless in Houston. Left fielder Michael Brantley hitting 327. Hit sharply left side diving stop story gets to his feet long throw and got him. Cold or not the defensive excellence of Trevor's story remains constant. Rockies trying to strike early. Trevor's story 1-0. Trevor rip it fair just inside the third baseline. It'll roll down onto the track. Tapia scores. They're going to send McMahon. He'll score from first. A two run double for Story. Jonathan Daza will lead off the Rockies second. And now the 2 2 is hit well down the left field line. Hooking towards the corner, but it is gone. Touch him all time. Jonathan Daza. First career home run for Daza. A no doubter to left to give the Rockies the lead. Hits the ball hard to straightaway center field. It's now towards right. What a diving, play. diving catch by Kyle Tucker. One of the plays of the year for the Astros. Austin Gomper, who has pitched well this year. Strong, strong outing for Austin Gomper. Hey, another fun aspect of watching games on YouTube is our interactive polling feature, which allows you to offer a multiple choice response to questions posed in the live game commentary. Stay tuned as the results will be revealed and discussed later in the broadcast. And we've got our first poll question to kind of get you going here tonight. Uh, and I think I think I could guess on some of the responses here. Who's the most most exciting player not named Mike Trout? Otani Acuna. Tatis Betts. I'm just disappointed there's no place for me to fill in a uh, my own response because Alejandro Kirk is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a tough one. There's so many great names there. Uh, Acuna Junior so far has done some things uh, when you score up on a pop pop up the second baseman. Uh, I'm going with that. Uh, as much as Otani has done, Acuna Jr. is my guy right now. How about you, Blummer? I'm, I'm, I've got to go Acuna also. I, what he did, like Gooby was talking about, it's, it's the power that he has, the aggressiveness on the base pass. But when I saw him beat out a routine ground ball to Didi Gregorius, that sold me that this guy is not only electric, but he plays hard. Yeah. Ball and two strikes. The count to Justin Upton leading things off in the second. Christian Javier. Issued a two out walk in the first, but did register three strikeouts. And route to a scoreless opening tonight. There's no wrong answers on that list. But I will stand by my claim that Alejandro oh. Kirk is the most exciting player in baseball for me because he's he's 5'7, 270, and he mashes. And that's four strikeouts for Javier. By the way, the play that Mookie Betts made to end the game against. The Padres the other day at San Diego, that was unbelievable. Yeah, Mookie's pretty unbelievable with his ability to make, he made a couple of plays in the World Series last year yeah. to help win ball games, but that was a heck of a way to finish one off. Here's Albert Pujols now with one out and the base is empty. And Albert sends a high fly ball foul. Some of his greatest conquests along the course of his 21 year Hall of Fame career right here in this building and I don't mean to salt up old wounds here Blummer but um, <laughs> I'm not sure Brad Litch has gotten a clean night's sleep since that night. 
No, that home run that he gave up to Albert Pujols in that championship series in 2005, I think they may have actually had to replace the plexiglass out there in left field above <laughs> the railroad tracks. But uh, that that home run has has left an indelible mark on this uh, community watching Albert Pujols over the years. Ball and two strikes to count to Pujols. How about Albert his last uh, series against Texas picked up a stolen base his 115th of his career and then the next night he hits his 664th career home run so and he's 41 years old. Did I see some place where that made him the oldest player to ever steal third at 41. I mean I, I don't know that many older than that have ever done it anecdotally unless somebody can Google that and tell me I'm wrong. And he's, he I'd hasn't been caught 13 straight. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Pull him to sleep. <laughs> Let's go back to the homer we talked about back in 2005. Game 5 oh of the boy. NLCS. We got liftoff. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy about that home run? That home run actually had an impact on the 2005 World Series that the Astros actually got to because it forced Roy Oswald to pitch in game six and not start game one of that 05 World Series. Wow. Two gone and five strikeouts for Christian Javier. Jose Iglesias. I'm not sure what's going on at that alternate site. <laughs> that, doesn't the term alternate site just sound creepy, mysterious? I mean, it sounds like, you know, like they're they're testing a nuclear reactor someplace <laughs> uh, away from the watchful eye of the federal government. Alternate site. We couldn't do any better than that. Wait for a Stranger Things episode to start. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boy, Christian Javier's got every pitch working tonight. And it's a ball and a strike to Jose Iglesias. This is the baby of the rotation at the age of 24. And a guy that was only pressed into duty last year because Justin Verlander became unavailable. Yeah, last year was interesting for the Astros pitching staff. A lot of guys making their major league debuts. And to your point, Maddie, Christian Javier ended up in third place in Rookie of the Year voting. A disappearing 92 mile an hour fastball upstairs. Looks like he can hit it, but it's by you. The one two to Iglesias. By the way, I, I was just uh, I was just sent a tweet. Matt Birch by the uh, Angels PR staff quick to remind me that Ichiro stole third at the age of 42 a year older than Albert when he did it this week. We just got to make sure we clean that stuff up. Thanks Matt. Well you can yeah you can never doubt Matty Birch he always has that little side information to be able to get us right. Two balls and two strikes to Jose Iglesias. Well, is he in swing mode or what man. Hit over 370 yeah, last year. Hacking. Short sprint with the Orioles had a great season. Ten year vet. Career highs last year in batting on base slugging. Celebrated his first homer as an angel yesterday. Again, the Angels homered four times in, but still lost. Christian Javier mix in a ground out, dude. All six via the swinging strikeout. And Trout gets a hold of one into the corner and left. And he got it. Two run shot for Trout. Got him. The thing registering another punch out for Alex Cobb. Here's the 1 1 to Otani. 
And that's hit well into the corner. That'll rattle around and right and clear the bases. Ball in two strikes. And Shohei just taps that one back up the middle. Wow. By the overload. Hey, he beats it out. He's allowed only one base runner on the two-out walk to Suzuki last inning. Did Shohei get him? Get going. Get going to right and gone. Another rocket off Otani's bat. A base hit to right. Absolutely incredible swing again for Shohei Otani. Three-hit performance. 94 mile an hour fastball still able to get the barrel of the bat and he is locked in and everything is being hit hard There's a pitch and there's a ball blasted out into left field It is out of here He did bust the game wide open. It's a grand slam and now it's 9-3 Angels if He knew it was gone. It's just a matter of how far it was gone Back for the bottom of the second inning. No score in Houston. And for Dusty Baker, as we mentioned, creeping up on the 1900 win club. He is on the door, on the doorstep. And once he gets into the room, you'll find the likes of Bobby Cox, Walter Alston, Sparky, John McGraw, almost 3,000 wins as a manager, Connie Mack and Boach. And serving them up at the bar, Bucky Harris, Joe McCarthy, and still winning games, Tony La Russa. That is quite an exclusive club, gentlemen. And taking all his teams, five of them, to the postseason. Ledmus Diaz hooks the ball into left field, and that'll bound up against the corner. First extra base hit of the night. Oh, and Diaz is able to stay on the bag. What the Mary Lou Retton is going on out there? Yeah, she's local. I'm not sure she if she's still giving out lessons, but that was a pretty traumatic slide into second base by Aledmus Diaz. Oh, man. You know, that short porch here in Minute Maid Park, that short porch in Minute Maid Park <laughs> here creates some interesting plays, but that looked like it hurt. Dude, that is right there. That is top of the file for why you have to stretch to play pro sports kids I mean you're gonna tear a groin you're gonna tear something if you're not ready for that play and here's Miles Straw now yeah if that was a USA UFC fight I'm tapping out right there after that slide I'm done <laughs> Straw the Southern California kid who has a big opportunity to play every day in Houston. Fastball's in for a strike. It's worth looking at that again. Yeah, he did a good job of staying down on that pitch and yanking it into the corner, but about right here he realizes he's got to turn it on. And I tell you what, there was a collective groan between the three of us when that happened. <laughs> Curveball fouled away, and it's a ball and two strikes to Straw. Miles did not play yesterday and has been slow to respond to uh, everyday opportunity this year. World of talent. Astros love him. They wouldn't have given him the keys to the job in the uh, George Springer list days that ensue had they not been fans of Miles Straw. And the thought is he'll come around. Dusty Baker telling us before the game he had a heart to heart with Miles yesterday and wants him just to be more aggressive at the plate, Jeff. Yeah, you know what? That was what was interesting is in, when spring training began for the Astros, there was an obvious hole in center field and an obvious hole at the top of the lineup. But having a guy like Miles Straw, he fits more of the traditional leadoff man type mentality where take some pitches. Get on base, create havoc with his speed, but uh, it's been tough going because he has been a little bit more passive. And I think Dusty having that heart to heart should help Miles Straw calm down a little bit, be more aggressive on pitches he knows he can get to. Uh, one thing that he has not done is laid down that bunt in certain situations. And that might be something he has to work on because it could be a valuable weapon to get him on base.
Two balls and two strikes. Sharply hit past the third baseman Rojas into the corner. That's going to get Diaz around to score. Miles Straw driving in the first run of the night, and it's 1 0 Astros. A ball into the short left field corner, then he turns into a triple. That speed on display. One of the most difficult things as a sinker ball pitcher with a man on second with no outs is to try to get an out other than a ground ball because you're a ground ball pitcher. 58.6% of the time it gets up by Rojas and in the corner, and then you get to see those wheels on display by Miles Straw. And that's also a very good view from behind home plate. That was a long way for Justin Upton to go to get that ball in the corner because to be be honest also about Miles Straw he goes the other way a lot of the time he very rarely turns on the ball so that was a tough play for Justin Upton to get all the way in the corner. Here's Martin Maldonado now chance for a fly ball to make it two nothing Astros early tonight and a couple of curveballs have him chasing. Maldonado re upping a new contract extension for him announced this week. Has always been regarded as one of the better pitch handlers and defensive catchers in the game. Rewarded for that. And he chases for a strikeout. Second for Cobb tonight, one away. Yeah, three straight knuckle curves. No, no thing there in that about it was the knuckle curve was so effective. 250 batting hours with a couple of strikeouts this year for that pitch for Alex Cobb got a strikeout against Maldonado with three straight. I know it's a small sample size but through Alex's first two starts as an angel he had the best chase percentage of any pitcher the first few weeks of the season almost 50 percent. He starts Correa with a curveball for a strike. It's a guy that's been through a lot physically along the course of his decade long big league career. Broke in with the Tampa Bay Rays against the Angels ironically. Here's a look at that chase rate. Forty five percent. Yeah during the offseason went up to Seattle the drive line to work on some things mechanically and a better fastball better command of his splitter and same thing with his knuckle curve. A ball and two strikes to Correa now. Hey Gooby has he always been a guy that started on that first base side of the rubber because he really strides towards that right handed hitter and creates that crossfire might create a little more deception maybe. Part of it he does that too is be able to make sure he gets inside with some of his pitches to the lefties as well. He's been really effective against left handed batters this year, more so than righties. Two balls and two strikes to Correa. Alex was never a, a huge. lot of times. Go ahead, Gooby. Yeah, a lot of times when you see a pitcher on that side of the rubber, they're more sinker ball. I always think of a guy like Derek Lowe. Very successful pitcher starts there being sure to be able to run that fastball a two seamer in a lefty to catch the inside corner. And a ground ball that trickles through the infield and allows Straw to score easily. Boy, that's a two strike count that just got away from Cobb. Went to a fastball there on two and two. And I think that made Correa's job a little easier. I agree. And I think if we see the free play, you're going to see that Suzuki set up on the inside, and this ball tailed over the outside, and Correa just punched it the other way. You talked about the low strikeout numbers earlier in the game, and that's what the Astros do is they try and fight in those two strike counts, and sometimes it pays off. RBI for Correa, his eighth of the year. Here's Michael Brantley now. So the little tweak atop the lineup card so far so good for Dusty Baker because Correa's turn came up with one out and a runner at third. 
And their shortstop came through. Two nothing Astros. Once again, the Angels overload the right side of the infield against the left handed hitting Brantley. Jeff, do you get a sense that Correa could stick around in that leadoff spot as long as Altuve's unavailable, or is that going to be one of those chairs that's rotated? You know what? Knowing that Dusty is approaching, you know, milestones with managerial wins, I think if they end up winning this ball game and Carlos Correa's on base a couple of times and driving runners in, and it looks like the offense is picking up a little bit, I don't, I don't think he'd move him until Altuve came back. To be honest with you. I mean, after all, I, and you know, this applies league-wide. Um, you know, Gooby, Willie Wilson, where have you gone? Those guys aren't around anymore. The true leadoff hitter that, that we knew, the guy that got on base and ran, you, you could name him on one hand this year. And Mike Trout has been in that spot a number of times for the Angels in his career. Reason why, you get him an extra at bat as the game progresses in that leadoff spot. Because you're only a leadoff man that first inning. Other than that, you have a chance to drive in runs and get an extra at bat later on in the game. Two balls and a strike to count to Michael Brantley. Carlos Correa does not have a stolen base attempt this year. Uh, you know, I also get the risk reward of the stolen base. I understand why Mike Trout doesn't run as, as often. I understand why a guy like Carlos Correa wouldn't run as often. The injury risk is it's too great to ignore sometimes. Still two balls Base and a strike. Base runners are doing a very good job. Base runners are doing their best they can to avoid some of those injuries you're talking about, Matt. A lot of these guys are going out there with the oven mid approach. Curveball in for a strike two and two. Michael Brantley, of course, returning to Houston on a two year free agent contract this year after uh, a heavy courtship from the Toronto Blue Jays when many people thought he was going to jo join George Springer and apply for a passport. And Cobb strikes him out on the thing, the split change. That's three for Alex Cobb tonight. Hey, ever want to know what it's like to be a rookie in the big leagues? Join Ryan Mountcastle of the Orioles on a behind the scenes vlog journey on youtube.com slash MLB. Two runs in. Two gone with a runner at first now for Alex Bregman who singled back in the first. Ah, and that one got him. Cobb came in with a fastball, got him on the elbow. Couple things really on that pitch right there for Alex Cobb. Strong, drops his wrist enough and it's going to run up and in on a right-handed batter instead of have sink action. That's why he's able to hit Brakeman on the elbow area. Boy, did that get him above the pad, yeah, too? It may have. I hope it didn't. But that Alex Cobb threw the same pitch that Alex got a hit on in that first at bat, swinging at the first pitch fastball in. So they were trying to do the same thing that they did in the first at bat. But like Ubi said, just got away from him. Here's Jordan Alvarez now. And again, the Angels overload the right side. Runners at first and second. Two runs in. And, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if it got. It sounded like it hit the pass, the first pass we took. And Alvarez slices that one out of play. Well, you go back to this inning, guys. 
Miles Straw, with his speed, created a couple runs. He hits that ground ball down the line, gets a triple, and with the infield in, ground ball to Albert Pujols. He was thinking, I got to be quick to the plate with the speed of Miles Straw, unable to make that play on that grounder by Correa his way. Two run score on in this inning because of the speed of Miles Straw. Two balls and a strike. Most RBIs in his first 100 career games. <laughs> Walt Dropo drove in 106 runs in his first 100 <laughs> games. Oh, man. I mean, you're talking about some historical figures there. The only contemporary name on that list is the guy at the plate. Two and two. Yeah, I had no I had no idea Jordan Alvarez was going to allow for so many Walt Dropo references in my life. <laughs> it's a good point. I don't know that Walt would have come up tonight at all if it had not been for Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> And I think Walt got all of his RBIs in the first three years of his career because there was a pretty drastic drop off after that. Oh, cop thought he had a call there. Ran that fastball in on the big left handed batter and just missed. And now it's a full count three and two. Play the guessing game with us, Gooby. What's he throw here on a full count? Go with split finger after fastball in. Generally, fastball up and in. You go down and away. The three two. Went back up there with a fastball and lost him. And that loads the bases for the second time in as many innings. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I was with you, Gooby. I thought he had him all set up for the split change. And here comes Angels pitching coach Matt Wise. Yeah, you always love to go back up a pitch like that with another back up and in fastball. But if it leaks out over the plate at all, we were talking about the power for Alvarez, you're going to run into some problems. Splitter down and away. He can hit a ground ball, may get a run in, but a big swing could result in a three-run home run if that fastball stays out over the plate. Big plate appearance here for Yuli Gurriel. The Astros would love to take further advantage of what has been an inning where their runners on base throughout. They've cashed in for two of them. Bases loaded with two gone now. Gurriel walked in the first. Along with Carlos Correa, eight RBIs early on to pace the team. And a guy that has been a real force with the bases loaded. A near 500 hitter. Takes a strike. In fact, he's exactly 500. 21 for 42 with the bases loaded. His two run homer yesterday, Houston's only home run in their last five games. And he's behind 0 2. Take you back to the snowy day in Denver. The one time this entire season I was glad we weren't traveling but he got a hold of a curveball from Gomber and drove it out to left center field and that was pretty much the most excitement those guys had other than watching snowfall maybe for the first times in their lives. <laughs> Dusty Baker telling us before the game today 60 years in professional baseball and he had never participated in a game in the snow which we all found kind of hard to believe for a guy that you'd think had been a part of every circumstance imaginable. Yeah that that one got me Dusty Baker has seen several decades of baseball and to hear that shocked me a little bit. Two strike count remains to Yuli Gurriel. That one misses up and in a ball and two strikes now. As a pitcher, Gurriel is your worst nightmare with the bases loaded because he can hit the ball to all fields. He can hit all speed pitch as well. He can hit fastball as well. And like I mentioned before, he's done a ton of damage against the Angels in his career. That ball wasn't even in the strike zone, and Yank just fouled. 
That's six inches off the inside corner. I mean, to your Uly point. does such an amazing job. Go ahead. Yeah, no, to your point, Gooby, wh I mean, where do you go? Where do you go to get him out? The old Rod Carew scouting report. Throw it right down the middle. Let him hit a line drive at somebody. <laughs> 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 yeah, Yuli does a great job of pulling that knob of the bat through so early, and there's so much lag on that bat that it creates all kinds of coverage. But he, he's not a very discriminant hitter when he's got RBIs out there. Oh man, Cobb shook Suzuki off to get to that fastball and just missed his spot. So now it's two and two. It's been a 35 pitch inning for Alex Cobb, and it has not been the breezy results that he had 10 days ago in Kansas City when he struck out 10 against the Royals. 2 2. Easy take for Guriel on the change. Double, a triple, a single, a hit batsman, and a walk this inning. Base is loaded. Here's the 3 2 pitch. And he just missed with the split change. Man, didn't miss by much. An RBI for Guriel is team leading ninth, 3 0 Astros. I'll tell you what, guys. It's been really impressive to watch Yuli this season. He's not typically a guy who is going to lay off pitches out of the zone. In the past, he hasn't been a guy that's been on base percentage type guy. He's usually been a guy that swings his way onto the base pass. But now this season with two walks, 15 on the season is a rarity for Yuli Gurriel. Well, he's already walked more than he did last season. 12 walks all of last year, 15 this season, and again, the only Astro that's walked more than he struck out. It's a ball and no strikes to Kyle Tucker, a strikeout victim to end the first. That came to get Cobb out of a bases loaded jam, trying to get out of another here. Fastball in for a strike. But going back to that take by Guriel, this is a short little stride. He was looking just to make some contact. He wasn't thinking grand slam. He was sticking middle of the field and making contact. And that's able to track it out of the zone. Two balls and a strike. An Astros team that is among the most disciplined in baseball. Fewest strikeouts in the American League at the start of play. They've there have been easy takes like that and there have been some borderline pitches that they've been able to stay away from and that has helped move the line in this three run inning and now Matt Wise is on the phone with the bullpen. Three balls and a strike to Tucker. And that's lined into shallow right where Fletcher had him played perfectly. To avoid any further damage, the Astros do crack the scoreboard for three in the second. A long inning for Houston. Results in three big runs. Astros on top early at home. Yeah, it was a really cool moment here. A lot of the fans were standing and showing their appreciation for the times when AJ was the manager, and I know it had to be an emotional time for him. Dawson has his first major league hit. Ronnie Dawson, a little fist pump as he heads down the line and slaps his hands together. Ronnie Dawson, congratulations. His first major league hit, leading off the seventh inning with a clean single to left. Yeah, get that baseball. First big league game tonight. On the ground, right side. That's a base hit. Alex Degodi, a single to right field, coming in to score Correa. The throw wide at third. Here comes Taylor Jones. He'll score. First major league hit. Give Degodi a single and an RBI. And giving that baseball, what a thrill for Alex Degodi. 
McCormick rips one to left center field. That ball is down and all the way to the wall. The Goatee sprinting home, but he can walk home. And Chaz McCormick into second base with an RBI double. Three nothing Astros. Brown ball hit to the right side into the shift to his right Diaz. He fields, throws to first, and the inning is over. Eight shutout innings for Zach Greinke. Welcome back, 3-0 Astros top half of the third. Earlier, we had our uh, YouTube most exciting player not named Mike Trout player poll. It's a mouthful. And Shohei Otani wins it in a landslide with over 50% of the vote. We'll have another poll question coming up for you a little bit later on. Uh, for now, we welcome Angels right-hander Dylan Bundy to the telecast. Dylan, welcome, man. Have you ever played with a guy uh, even remotely as skilled and interesting as Shohei Otani? Uh, I'm gonna say no, I haven't. Uh, I mean, the guy throws 100 mile an hour on the mound and then hits balls 450 feet. So uh, there's not anybody else in the game that does that. So he's definitely the one of the most exciting. There you go. It's a ball into the opposite field from Jose Rojas, oh. and Rojas gets that one off the top of the wall, inches away from his first big league homer. I really thought that ball was going. I think he did too. We're taking another look at the replay here, Dylan, and how far up on that wall did it go? Man, yeah, hit that, hit that big garage door. So Rojas happy with a leadoff double. Hey, congrats on a great start to the season, man. Uh, Tell us about how you're feeling. Tell us about the weird layoff, getting that that series canceled against the Twins. Give us the report card. Yeah, it's been kind of a weird start to the season. With uh, you know, it seems like we've had a lot of off days and then the rainouts and uh, or the weather down in Dunedin, Florida. So uh, then they canceled with the Twins. So yeah, it's definitely weird. But uh, you know, we're doing the best we can and uh, trying to win ball games. So, Dylan, t talk about the comfort you've had wearing that Angel uniform. An outstanding year last year, always go you know, out there and attack in the strike zone, and another good start of a season this year, the comfort with the Angels. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I get along with everybody here. Uh, we have, a good, I think, good chemistry in the clubhouse right now with these guys we have here. So, uh, good staff. Uh, you really can't ask for much. And uh, new division. Uh, you know, still trying to get to know all these teams in this division now. So, uh, always learning uh, as a pitcher, definitely. Dylan, Jeff Blum here from the Houston Astros broadcast. And I was with you. I thought that uh, Rojas hit that ball out of here. And I'm kind of curious, when you come into a ballpark like Minute Maid Park, where the dimensions are so unique, do you have to alter your uh, game planning when you come in here to face this team? Oh no, definitely, <laughs> definitely don't do that. I mean, uh, you, you stick to the game plan, whether it's off reading their swings or kind of the game plan you want to attack with, uh, whether it be off speed, fastballs, whatever it may be. But uh, I don't think you change based on the ballpark dimensions, though, or the shape of it. Kurt Suzuki pops one up behind the plate, and that'll get out of play. So, Dylan, you're uh, you're scheduled on Sunday. What, what you, if if you're the last guy to pitch in a long series like this one what are your off days like are you looking at video what do you do before games leading up to your start day. Yeah like a bullpen today uh, this is my third day after my my last start so bullpen just to kind of feel out some things work on a few things if you want uh, and then just some light catch tomorrow recovery. Uh, same thing the following day and then uh, get ready for your start uh, on Sunday. There that one. Suzuki sends one into the oh. corner and just foul. Man, it's deceiving. We're in the we're in the studio, Dylan. We can't tell what's going on. We don't know whether to squat oh, or wind okay. our watch half the time. You got a better view than we do.
Dang, that's two now. This maybe, inning. Maybe we should let him give you some play by play. I mean, it'd be better than mine already. <laughs> Do you think, here's a question for you, because we're taking a look at the ballpark now, nice aerial shot. Do you buy into the difference between the roof open and the roof closed at a place like this, or do you not even care? I don't read too much into it, but yeah, I've heard those things like Toronto with the roof open, closed versus, you know, does the ball carry more? I'm sure it has an effect, you know, depending on which way the wind's blowing, but, uh, or how it comes into the stadium, I guess, but I think you'd have to be the home team to know what it does exactly. By the way, did you just see that guy eat it trying for the foul ball? Did you see that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude just absolutely bit it. I mean, <laughs> there's partial attendance all around Major League Baseball, so when a guy falls that spectacularly, we see it clearly. I don't know if there's a monitor in the dugout. You're going to love this if you can see it again. Ball and two strikes, by the way, the count to Kurt Suzuki. <laughs> I mean, this guy went down like a... I have to go back and look at it. <laughs> And Kurt's battling. We're going to take a look at it again, Dylan, so bear with us here. Check this dude out. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I've got the number for a good spine specialist in town. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I, oh. He's fine. I think someone did that actually Walking in off. Anaheim, our last game. Yes. Yes, it happened. Kept it in front, though. Kept it in front of him. Still a ball and two strikes on Kurt Suzuki as we continue visiting with the Angels right hander Dylan Bundy. Hey Dylan be, because we're on YouTube tonight and and Gooby Blummer and I are having a good time with this. We've asked a lot of people including your manager. I'll ask you the same thing. What was the last instructional video that you looked at on YouTube to learn how to do something. Oh that's a good question. Uh... Instructional, maybe about an electric bike, maybe. I don't, well, I don't know if that's too instructional, though. Well, sure, yeah. That. I mean, to ride but it, to to build it. I, didn't I mean, that. yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah, just how to how to work it, I guess, and how the battery and brakes, throttle, stuff stuff like that, I guess. I, On an electric bike, that's that's what it is. We had a pool <laughs> going. We thought you were. We thought it was going to be a hunting video or a fishing video, and we were wrong about that. <laughs> well, it's. A, <laughs> Well, it is an electric bike for hunting, though. <laughs> okay. uh, it's got like really fat tires on it. It's got like really fat tires on it. So Suzuki trying to get Dang. that one to stay fair. Man, he's on him. Just can't get it to drop into fair territory. Hey, Dylan, how is it to throw to Kurt Suzuki behind the plate, man? He's always had a great reputation of working well with pitchers. Yeah, big fan. I mean, he's been in the game for what, 14, 15 years now. Uh, a lot of knowledge back there. And uh, anytime you have a guy like that with his veteran presence back there, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of trust in him. Two balls and two strikes. It stays to Kurt Suzuki. We're gonna hang with you for this at bat, Dylan, because so far so good. As long right. as he keeps Wasn't the bat. How many how many pitches is that? <laughs> We got people that can tell you that. Hang on. Oh, nice. Hey, Dylan, does it drive you nuts when a hitter is fouling balls off like this? Yeah, kind. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, <laughs> you'd rather them, you know, put it in play or miss it. This is going to be the 11th pitch coming up to Kurt Suzuki after the leadoff double by Jose Rojas. Three nothing Astros. Yeah, what's the most? 19? 19 uh, or 20? I, Wasn't it Brandon Bell? That's a good question. I, I don't know about modern uh, modern history, but I know that last year the longest by an Angels batter was Justin Upton 11. So that's where we're at oh, right now go. with Kurt. And I'm told Dylan that the longest on record is 21 a 21 pitch at bat back in 1988. Nice. Oof. Yeah. Yeah that sounds terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not fun. No. <laughs> For the hitter too, Blumber. Yeah. It's work. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not. I could stand up there all day and say, "Yeah, I was up there fighting some of these pitches off." When in reality, I couldn't square one up. 
And Suzuki finally succumbs to the strikeout. That's seven for Javier. Hey, Dylan, we appreciate the visit, man. We love watching you pitch, and we'll enjoy watching you pitch on Sunday to wrap up this series. Way to go. All right, all right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan Bundy joining us on the broadcast tonight. I didn't ask you guys. Gooby, what was the last instructional video that you looked at on YouTube? Uh. Uh, you know, cooking and making a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> Believe it or not, because I had to do some little fun thing for the Angels. And even being a Philly guy, you would think I would know. But no, I had, uh, I had to get a little instruction on YouTube on how to make one. Man, your secret is safe on South Street with me. Mark Goob is a Philly guy. Needed to, <laughs> needed to YouTube how to make a cheesesteak. <laughs> All the special ingredients. <laughs> yes. Top of the order. <laughs> Here's David Fletcher. <laughs> You had to watch a video for Cheese Whiz, huh? <laughs> Yo, no, I can't do that. I had to go by Prevalone Cheese. <laughs> oh, there we go. Plumber, how about you? Last YouTube instructional video. I had to figure out how to dismantle my garbage disposal and fix it because my beautiful wife put down an entire head of lettuce into the garbage disposal and locked it up. <laughs> That's living in the house with five women right there. Oh, yeah. It's a fly ball into the corner. That's got a chance if it stays fair, and that one's foul. And it's 0-2 to David Fletcher. Did you, did it work? Did he, he unclog it? Oh, I, I was an absolute hero that night. Didn't have to do the dishes. Beers were brought to me. It was glorious. <laughs> Christian Javier has not done anything but strike people out. He's allowed a walk and a double tonight and all seven outs on swinging strikeouts. Well the way he's pitching tonight it's hard to imagine his not being a part of the opening day rotation plans even if everybody's healthy. No, very true, especially with the issues that the Astros have had in their rotation coming out of spring training. Framber Valdez on the injured list with a broken finger. He's rehabbing and hoping to be back by the end of May. And then Jake Odorizzi being added to the rotation, but he wasn't able to join the team until two or three starts into the season. So I agree with you in the sense that he's got the stuff to play at this level. It was just a matter of fitting him into the rotation. And unfortunately, unfortunately, he was one of the guys that had to be sent to that alternate site when there were those days off came into play. Ball and two strikes to count to David Fletcher. Second time through for him now. See how he reacts. Remember we talked about that in the beginning. 462. Second time through for Javier. So a little more difficult, especially this part of the order coming up now for the Angels with a man in scoring position. And Fletcher chases to strike out. But that if that's not a perfect pitch breaking ball gets the very outside of the corner. Gosh you know what if you're striking out Dave, David Fletcher there is something good about that breaking ball pretty impressive eight strikeouts tonight for Javier ties a career high for him. Last time he did it, it was against it. The other Los Angeles team. You make a good point about striking out David Fletcher too, Jeff. Here's Shohei Otani now with a runner at second and two gone. Back to back strikeouts. Fletcher's strikeout percentage since the start of the 2018 season is the second lowest in all of baseball. Only Andrelton Simmons, former Angel, and Joe Panic, a current Blue Jay, have struck out in a fewer percentage of plate appearances. It's 0 1 to Otani. We check it out. We got three of the five lowest strikeout percentages in baseball on the field tonight. Because right underneath Fletcher is Brantley and Guriel on this list. He doesn't hit it hard but who cares. 
He doesn't barrel it, but who cares? He hits 300 and doesn't strike out. Otani had one to hit, but flies it into center for Straw, and nothing comes of the leadoff double. More impressive work by 24 year old right hander Christian Javier. Nice inside out pass in an opposite field base hit for Shohei, and the Angels have a one out base runner in the first. Here's the 1 1 to Otani. And that's hit well into the corner. That'll rattle around and right and clear the bases. One too many fastballs against Shohei Otani. And the Angels get their three run lead back in the seventh. Shohei serves that into the opposite field, and that's going to drop in front of Benintendi and roll all the way to the track. Fletcher coming around third into score, and it's an 8 3 Angel lead. More damage by Otani. That's his fifth extra base hit in his last 11 at bats. Shohei Otani. Another RBI, giving him three on the game. He's allowed only one base runner on the two out walk to Suzuki last inning. Did Shohei get him? Get going, get going to right and gone! The superhero does it again. Number four for Shohei Otani. What a job by Shohei. And welcome back to Minute Maid Park. We have another poll for you, and we'd like to know which upcoming free agent shortstop will get the biggest deal. So those watching in Puerto Rico, you could start voting for Carlos Correa now, or family members for Story, Seeger, or Baez. And uh, got a feeling all of those guys will be paid quite well, Maddie, very soon. Yeah, Brett, thanks for that. Um, man, I mean, there's no wrong answer there. What a talent list. Lindor was on that list, of course, but. Uh, Re-upped and going nowhere outside of Flushing Queens for the next decade. Alex Cobb back to work, and he'll get the bottom third of the order for the Astros, who lead it three zip. Maybe Jake Odorizzi has some thoughts on that. Uh, Jake Odorizzi joining us. Hey, Jake, thanks for taking some time, man. Did you hear that list of shortstops? And between Baez, Seager, Story, and Correa, who is the guy on that list that you'd like to face the least? Oh, geez, that's a. Uh... I don't know if there's one you want to pick out of that group. I feel like they'd take offense to it, and it'd be worse if you picked one. So uh, <laughs> right, true. I haven't faced Seeger. Um, uh, it's been a while since I faced Baez. Uh, I never faced Story. So I guess maybe all three, <laughs> the three guys that I haven't seen all that often. I've seen Carlos uh, plenty, so uh, I could do without that now. You know, I don't have to worry about that anymore since we're uh, sharing the same dugout. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and by the way, thanks for coming on with us. Congratulations on your deal joining the Astros. I know that the Astros and the fans were thrilled that you decided to sign there. Ironically, the team that, that you were linked to so often in the offseason is the Astros opponent tonight. The Angels uh, were reportedly hot on your heels, too. Tell us about the reasons you chose the Astros and the fit in Houston. So yeah, I mean the, the Angels were one of the teams that were uh, you know talked to us pretty much from start to finish, but um, ended up choosing here in the end. I thought it was a, a good fit from a from a pitching staff wise. I've heard tremendous things about Strami, and uh, good pitch right there. Um, he he does a lot of philosophies that I trained with in the offseason, Has the same thought process, and there's been some guys that have come here that have had a lot of success. Um, you know, kind of amplifying what they do well, they make it better. So. I was excited about that. I have a lot of former teammates on this team. Um, one of my uh, former catchers in Minnesota, Jason Castro, was here. So I thought the rapport of showing up late to spring training and already having a pitcher-catcher relationship was a very important thing to try to catch up as, as quick as possible. So that had a lot of influence on it as well. Um, and, you know, the team in general, you know, this is a very a very good team. I know we haven't played like it uh, probably the last 10 days or so. but. Uh, you know, hopefully we start turning around, but I, I think there's a lot of good things ahead for us um, here in the future. Hey, Jake, you and Alex Cobb have a very good pitch in your repertoire, that split change. Is there any similarity between your your change and his split? Uh, does that go back to your time in Tampa Bay together? 
Yeah, he's the one who taught me how to throw the split. I throw it a little bit different. I'm a little higher on the ball than what he is. But, uh, yeah, he was the one who, who taught it to me. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a turning point in my career. I was finally had a, an off-speed pitch that wasn't a breaking ball. So, um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's funny how, you know, things come full circle and that sort of thing. But, yeah, I was very thankful. I was a rookie trying to make the team out of spring. And he went out of his way and uh, worked with me in spring training, helped me, you know, throw it, manipulate it. And, uh, you know, it's, it really – Changed the way I uh, I pitch to this day. So Jake, think, speaking of how things turn and, and come around, you were traded for Zach Greinke, and now you're a teammate with him. How important it is to be around him and learn how to pitch because he's one of the all-time greats. Yeah, he's fantastic. And anytime you can sit and listen to Zach talk about pitching, um, anything in general, I just want to sit there and soak it up because then he has such knowledge when it comes to it and has the reasons to back it up. Not just like, you know, he thinks it's this, he thinks it's that. But he has, you know, the reasoning behind, you know, why he thinks something and there. There's data to back it up. So he's uh, he's fantastic to be around. And I know a lot of the guys here really like sitting and just listen to him talk. And it's not all that often we get a you know, wants to sit and talk, but um, it's it's great to just be able to have a guy like that on a uh, in a rotation and he was the guy I, I modeled myself after after I was drafted I thought there was a lot of similarities and now to be here obviously we've been traded for each other it's it's really weird how that works out but I'm just trying to pick his brain and learn as much as I can from him um, every single day. Yeah that's actually interesting that you talked about that because I know after your last start at Minute Maid Park you had talked about possibly getting near Justin Verlander uh, but talk about you know what you guys talk about as a as pitchers in Minute Maid Park. Did they offer any uh, you know tidbits on how to handle pitching in a ballpark? Because you got snake bit by a couple of home runs in that Crawford box. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tough intro to. Uh, oh, there we go. Boy, that's a ball that's four inches in on his hands, and, and Carlos Correa lines it into center. Well, bloops it into center for an RBI base hit. What a fine job at the plate. By Carlos Correa, four nothing Astros. Yeah, so going back on my, it wasn't the most ideal uh, start to my Astros career. That's for sure. I would like something a lot better than what it was, but um, you know that's baseball. On one of those home runs, I think this was the only part that it was going to be a home run in, so you can't really fault it too much. But um, you know, there's going to be games where where that happens, but. Uh, you know, I might have jumped the gun a little bit on, you know, making trying to figure out wholesale changes and just, you know, it's still early. I'm playing catch up pretty big right now of, you know, I only had a couple starts last year and a couple this year. And obviously I signed late. So I'm still in the in the catch up mode. And, uh, you know, I really noticed how much execution is kind of the last thing that comes after missing some time, um, you know, barely pitching at all. So the stuff I feel is there is the execution. That's the issue. So, you know, I can focus on the execution pick better locations, make better pitches, and the, you know, maybe that solves that problem right from the get-go. Hey, Jake, we appreciate the visit, man. Best of luck the rest of the way in Houston this year. All right, appreciate it, guys. Good talking to you all. The two-out RBI single chases Alex Cobb. A pitching change. Enter Alex Claudio. We'll be right back. There you see right-hander Zach Granke on the mound. Swing and a miss. Greinke picks up his first strikeout. Pull the string on him with a changeup, and Zach picks up back-to-back -back strikeouts, getting Haggerty and Hanager. Breaking ball swing and a miss, and Haggerty goes down on three pitches. Another curveball from Greinke. That's his fourth strikeout. Luis Garcia up in the Astros pin. Here's the pitch. Changeup, swing and a miss. Inside changeup, and he gets him on three pitches. And there's one away here in the seventh. Five strikeouts for Grinky. Wow. Swing it up, man. Wow. 67 mile an hour curveball, Zach Grinky. Looking great tonight. Two outs into the seventh. Just toying with guys right now. Flip that breaking ball out there. No chance Marmaleos is going to be able to stay back on that pitch. Ground ball hit to the right side into the shift to his right Diaz. He fields, throws the first eight shutout innings for Zach Greinke.
Welcome back to the YouTube Game of the Week. Back from Minute Maid Park, we are presented by Chime. With Mark Gubaza at Angel Stadium. Jeff Blum and Brett Dolan at Minute Maid Park. Matt Vaskersian and the Angels go to the bullpen early. It's a little bit of a dice roll here, Gooby, as Alex Claudio comes out. Alex Cobb did not have his A stuff as he did 10 days ago. However, he had gotten Michael Brantley out twice tonight and it has kept him at a 1 for 12 for his career. There are two out here, but the dice roll is this. Because of the three batter minimum, if Claudio lets Michael Brantley get on base, he's got to face Alex Bregman. This was a calculated risk, and Joe Madden just felt like it was time for Alex Cobb. And with Claudio, you always have that chance with this changeup to be able to neutralize a right-handed bat. So he's thinking at, at sidearm break a ball against the lefty here. If he can't get him out, he still has a changeup against Bregman to get him out. And I think because Cobb had not pitched in a while, it was a stressful amount of pitches this entire game for him. A ball and a strike to count to Brantley. One for four against Alex Claudio in his career again. One for 12 against Alex Cobb, but Cobb gone after 79 pitches. It was a two out double by Martin Maldonado and then an RBI single by Carlos Correa. And Brantley lines that one into fair territory and right. It'll be a ground rule double for Michael Brantley. And that, for the time being, has prevented a run. Boy, this has played right into Dusty Baker's hands now. Is this an automatic to walk Alex Bregman here, Plummer? Yeah, it could be, especially the way Alex is swinging the bat, having some good at-bats against Alex Cobb, as you see Brantley just sneaking that one in that right field line. Unfortunately, bouncing into the seats to keep Correa at third base. But I think to Gooby's point, with Claudio's changeup, you might throw a couple off the plate and see if you can't get Alex Bregan to roll one over. Brantley, the runner at second after his sixth double of the year already. And the fire good and hot here. 0 1 the count to Alex Bregman. Tell you what, fellas, I have not seen this ball club in a long time swing it like they are early. Kind of the perfect storm, right? You've got an Astros team that couldn't wait to get out of Denver. That after all the COVID layoffs, guys that were inactive are healthier. You think you already made the point Jeff about Bregman's legs looking fresh and they catch Alex Cobb on a, a night where he was 10 days between starts. Ball and two strikes to count to Alex Bregman. And there was a lot of conversation in and around the Houston area around the Houston Astros asking Major League Baseball why they were playing and the Minnesota Twins were not. Astros having to call up four of players from their alternate site to try and fight through that road trip. But you're right, th these couple of day layoffs will have effects on guys, both hitters and pitchers. Bregman lines that into left field, and the whole thing is blown up. Two runs will score, and the Astros take a commanding 6 0 lead. That absolutely backfired for the Angels. You go back to the point with the Astros, they're making contact. I mean, these are not necessarily all squared up baseballs tonight, but they're putting the ball in play. That's towards the end of the bat, a changeup that was elevated. If it's down on a changeup, he can't hit that ball in the air. But because it's elevated, he's able to flare that into the outfield. So credit the Astros putting the ball in play and making solid contact throughout. So here's Jordan Alvarez now, who's been on base in both of his at bats, a base hit and a walk, each of those coming against Alex Cobb. I mean, this, this is the, the chance you take knowing the three batter minimum. 
that if the move didn't make for the first hitter and it didn't then you got to face Bregman who had big numbers again against Claudio and now you got to get Alvarez as well. A series of calculated risks managing with the new rule. 2 0 now. Three and oh. Well, what's helped the Astros lineup tonight certainly has been the generous base on ball equivalent from the Angels. Three by Alex Cobb. Stack has power by Google Cloud. Every time he sneezes, it looks like a party favor. Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> Spraying them all around the park. Pretty impressive home run distribution. Full count. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Gooby, his first big league home run was up towards that Phillips 66 gas pump in left center field. I think it was Dylan Bundy. Yeah, I remember how far that went. This man is strong. And Alex Claudio minimizes the damage, if you can say such a thing, at the end of a three run inning. All Astros tonight at the end of 3 6 0 Houston. So many people are so excited to see this young man at 19 years old. We landed in LA at like 6 30, quarter of seven. And we take a cab to Anaheim, which is an hour away. Which right. was uh, a like cab. Russia. <laughs> well, here he is, center fielder Mike Trout, his major league debut tonight. We had traffic to right. get to Anaheim. We do not get to the stadium the until seventh, the sixth or seventh seven. inning. And we Mike, are running. So running. listen, here's the other, here's the killer. So we tell oh, Mike, yeah. mom, mom says, Mike, now leave us four tickets. <laughs> right. So we'll be there. Well. I go up to the poor ticket. kid. He's I know he's got he's got he doesn't right. leave his tickets. Right? We're he's like, okay, just we'll buy tickets. Just give us a ticket somewhere. Yeah. And we finally get into the stadium. It's like the top of the eighth inning, and a ball has hit the center. This one out toward right center, and we had just sat down. Mike Trout giving chase. Long run by Trout. Hey. Mike made that unbelievable catch out in the outfield. Holy smokes, what a catch by the kid. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week on YouTube presented by Chime. 6 nothing Astros. Mike Trout leads off the fourth, and he's wearing a microphone for us tonight. Push time. Where all these pitches are? It's exactly where I had them. And I checked off this one nice. Yeah. Ready to hit, too. Yeah. Mike will lead things off here in the fourth inning. He and the Angels down by six. All over the Angels all time career leaderboard. The only thing he does not have a shot at is uh, Sean Figgins career caught stealing record. Huh. The only one out of reach. Oh yeah but Trotty, Yeah he hasn't <laughs> been running as much but he picks his spots. Well Sean Figgins the old thing he's getting figgy with it with Figgins. <laughs> Who wants it for the cycle for the Angels, which Mike Trout did as well. 0 1 the count to Mike. You walked with two out in the first. That's one of only two base runners against Christian Javier. And on another night, Blummer, when the Astros haven't erupted for six in three innings, we'd be talking about Javier as being the story. He's one of the stories tonight in the midst of a terrific starting performance, having struck out eight. 
Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The Astros have six runs on the board, and it still doesn't match up to those eight strikeouts that Javier has. And he's not a guy that's been known for the swing and miss ability. Usually it creates soft contact and uses that defense behind him, but he has been a one man show on top of that bump tonight. Three balls and a strike to count to Trout. Mike Trout through his walk tonight has had 70 plate appearances to start the year. He's been on base in 36 of them. And it's a full count to him now. You know what I don't understand, Gooby, and you've watched Mike Trout throughout his career. I don't understand why he doesn't get the Bryce Harper treatment more often. That is to say, nothing to hit. Well, early he did. With, with Anthony Rendon in the lineup, Matt, he got a lot more fastballs last year. And that's why you saw the home run with 17 home oh, runs last year. Oh, man, he got hit in the elbow, and I don't know that that got a, There's no pad there, I don't think. Oh. Yeah, he has a little protection there right around the tricep area, but that looked like it got him right in the elbow. I that, tell you what, even with those elbow pads and that protection, if you get squared up on the elbow, it is going to hurt no matter what. And that ball got him good. It, it, it did get him on the pad, but Blumber, to your point, it still hurts, man. That's a big, strong dude. He doesn't react like that unless it really hurts. Understandable concern by the Angels. Almost looked as if he left that elbow out there a little bit longer, maybe not anticipating that ball staying inside as much as it was. Yeah, it almost as if he was not concerned about getting hit with the pitch on that one, the way he stuck his elbow out there. Yeah, I agree with you, Gooby. Definitely didn't sound good. No. He's going to try to stick around, at least for the time being. And uh, I'm just being informed that tonight's home plate umpire, Ron Culpa, you guys remember that Mets Marlins game earlier that ended on the hit by pitch play that was controversial? A lot of people oh, yeah. felt like Michael Conforto leaned into it. Some people felt like the ball never hit him at all. Ron Culpa had the plate for that one as well. Weird plays are following Ron around. Mia culpa. <laughs> Here's Jared Walsh now with the leadoff hitter aboard. <laughs> Walsh, one of the strikeout victims. First time through by Javier. Seven of the nine Angels that stepped to the plate struck out against him first time around. Oh and two. Boy, it still it still looked like Trout leaned in on it. It was a game earlier this year where Jarrett Walsh got hit by a pitch. He goes, that's good for my on-base percentage. But Trout, he's already got a high on-base percentage. He doesn't need any more with a hit by a pitch. No, he definitely doesn't, and the league doesn't want to see that guy get hurt either. He's a lot of fun to watch when he's on that ball field. 0-2 oh, to Jared Walsh. Protect mode. Well, you know, when you think about the guys that have the mega deals and the guys that have the, the biggest overall contracts in baseball, Trout's being the biggest, and it's a group that includes... Lindor, Betts, Tatis. Padres fans were worried about the same thing with their all-world shortstop when the shoulder injury occurred. I mean, there's just too much money invested, too much hope in one player to have somebody like that go down. Well, you remember the other day, Mookie Betts, same thing, got hit in the elbow area on a pitch running in on him as well.
They're like quarterbacks in the NFL right when one of these all world talents a contract comes due. They jump to the front of the line. I don't know that anybody's going to get past Trout's 426 anytime soon though. That's a firm number. Yeah those kinds of numbers will make your portfolio strong to quite strong. Back to two balls and two strikes on Jared Walsh. You started 0 and 2, battling here to even up the count. Up to next. Houston on top, 6 0 here in the top half of the fourth. And Walsh lines the ball back up the middle. Trout aboard after being hit by the pitch. Let's listen into what it sounded like in some of the reactions a little while ago. Okay to stick it out. Runners at first and second to start the inning now for Justin Upton. Trying to convert on a five game hitting streak. Gooby, what were those numbers you had earlier, Javier, second time through the lineup? Yeah, 462 batting average against him that second time through. So there's an opportunity for the Angels to get back. But I'll tell you what, his slider has been so good tonight. It's not going to be an easy task getting back, even though he struggled second time through. Upton also a strikeout victim tonight, and he's able to lay off to move the count to 2 0. I know it sometimes sounds odd, but when you're a pitcher and you hit a, a batter, especially with a six to nothing lead, it can rattle you a little bit. And that seems to be the case this inning for Javier after hitting Trout with that pitch inside. It gives up a base hit out over the plate against Walsh. And now 2 0 count with Justin Upton, who hit a home run yesterday, exit velocity of 117 miles an hour. Two balls and no strikes. Oh. Call on a slider, two and one. Brett Dolan, a guy in Justin Upton that's been around. Hard to believe this is already his fifth year as an Angel. Well, it's hard to believe he was drafted back in 2005, the number one pick overall. And guys, this is a class that is. A bit of a baseball dinosaur. There are four T Rexes left on active Major League rosters from that 2005 class. Anybody want to take a guess or guesses on the four remaining guys other than Upton still active on big league rosters? Um, you going to give me time to, to uh, Google it? <laughs> <laughs> I will say. Uh, no. Two others are in the top 11 picks of that draft. So three guys of the five that are remaining were picked in the top 11 overall back in 2005. I know it wasn't exactly yesterday, but uh, that class might not be around in another couple of years. Chased a high fastball. So from behind 2-0 to a strikeout for Javier is ninth of the game. Well, let's let's pay it off here. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman was the only guy that I kind of thought was there. But yeah, a lot of these guys. Jay Bruce just shut it down. Jacoby Ellsbury is not playing anymore. Jed Lowry resurgent with the A's this year. Wow, what a class. It's amazing. Amazing that four of the first five picks were non pitchers. Here's Albert now. Pujols also a strikeout victim tonight.
that draft was so long ago that Ryan Zimmerman was a draft pick of the Montreal Expos, wasn't he? That's right. That's right. Actually, I'm, I'm being corrected. We were all wrong. He was a, the first ever pick by the Nats. That was their inaugural season. 05. Okay. But have a Jed Lowry, what he's doing for Oakland. He, I mean, did do a whole lot for the New York Mets back with the A's, and the A's just keep <laughs> on winning. Yeah, that'd be a fun team to be on right now. Pujol swings and misses. It gets away from Maldonado, so free 90 feet for Trout and Walsh. And that'll get the Angels out of a traditional double play threat. It is not too often that you get Albert Pujols to swing at a slider like that. That's one pitch he's had a tough time with as a slider so far this year at Oblomer. He's chased quite a few of them early in the season. Two and two. You know, when you look at Albert on the and all that's time. That. So, sorry, go ahead, Blummer. No, I was just going to mention that's a, that's a sign of a veteran at bat right there by Albert Pujols taking a wild swing and a slider and then backing off the next one because Javier trying to go back out there to get the chase. Two balls and two strikes. Runners at second and third. Six nothing Houston. And Albert pops that one up behind the plate. Maldonado chasing and running out of room. New to the MLB game of the week for the 2021 season is the YouTube player of the game where fans watching on mobile devices and computers can vote for which player will receive a trophy during the postgame show. Stay tuned for the player of the game polling options coming up a little later on. I don't think it's a stretch to say Christian Javier is an early leading candidate. Albert looking for a base hit that would get the Angels on the board here in the fourth. Full count now. Amazing thing about Albert, he is so in tune on how they get a run home. And I know a lot of people talk about an RBI not being the, the tell all statistic of all time, but Albert with over 2,100 RBI finds a way to get a run home no matter what the scenario. Three balls and two strikes. Runners at second and third. One gone in the fourth. Javier sitting on nine strikeouts. Pujols pops this one up. Two gone. Nine strikeouts. Let's take a look at the location of these pitches. Gooby on StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Well, he's got some strikeouts at the upper third, like we said. And he's got some nasty stuff, but also with that slider and curveball with great spin rate, lower part, but upper part of the strike zone, impossible to read. Even though it's not 98, it's 92, 94 with pretty good spin rate as well upstairs. Jose Iglesias, one of the victims tonight. The only angels that haven't struck out are Trout and Rojas. Iglesias takes a strike. This has been a game of deep counts. Alex Cobb struck out four. Javier struck out nine. been four walks tonight two hit batsman and it's 0 and 2 
Well, I'll tell you what, he gets a nasty spin rate. His average spin rate on the slider this year, 25-21. The Major League average, 24-26, so well above the Major League average on spin on the slider. In the air out to right. Routine fly ball for Kyle Tucker to retire the side. Nothing comes of runners at second and third with one away. Four impressive shutout innings for Christian Javier. Being able to celebrate, you know, the birth of our child around his birthday, it uh, definitely means a lot to all of us, and you know, we're, we're extremely excited. Aaron Cox was Mike Trout's best friend and Jess Trout's younger brother. He was born in August of 1994. He died in August two years ago. And the semicolon being a symbol of suicide prevention. They started a suicide prevention campaign called Your Game Isn't Over Yet. The Trouts worked with Tiny Turnip on a powerful design that includes words of encouragement in the stitches of the baseball. It's just something that's really special to us that we were able to do this in his honor and his name and hopefully make a difference and help another family from having to go through the tragedy that we went through. And there's one more thing the Trouts decided to do in Aaron's name. They gave it to Beckham. Beckham Aaron Trout. Hey, each week this season on our broadcast, we'll focus on a YouTube content creator featured in our live game commentary section. Today, our creator spotlight shines on Matt Antonelli, a member of the Red Sox faithful. Matt's channel features baseball tips, drills, and instructions for players of all ages. Search Antonelli Baseball on YouTube for more. Remember Matt from his San Diego Padres days? Padres getting ready to start a big four game series in Los Angeles tonight and here on YouTube the Astros off to a commanding start tonight on top of the Angels six nothing back with Jeff Blum Mark Gubazon Brett Dolan Matt Vaskersian and Alex Claudio will continue to face Yuli Gurriel Kyle Tucker and Ledmus Diaz in the Houston fourth. Blummer I remember when uh, A.J. Hinch was managing the Astros and talking to him about the kind of hitter that Yuli Gurriel is. Hinch used to discuss certain hitters for whom you give the additional layer of information, metrics, etc., and certain guys who you just give a little information to and then let them go rake. He put Gurriel squarely in that second category. Yeah, it's actually a really good call. And what a lot of fans don't know is that Yuli Gurriel was a veteran playing in Cuba for years. So when he came into the major leagues with the Houston Astros, he was a little long in the tooth as far as knowledge and how to play the game and having a swing that developed in Cuba. And he came over here and he was a gap to gap type guy. He knew which pitches he could handle. So I think it's kind of a credit to A.J. Hinch putting trust in Yuli Gurriel to go out there and produce and let him be who he is. And it turned out to be a pretty good move. Yeah, Kyle Tucker's just beating the shift. A little doinker up over the mound. This has got to be a game that's driving Gooby nuts being an ex pitcher and just watching the Astros dink and doink and just continue to put runners on base because they haven't hit the ball all that hard in this game. Yeah the, the dugout and the clubhouse may be in jeopardy after I walked off the mound at some <laughs> point tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Claudio being removed second pitching change tonight for the Angels and we'll be right back. Make 
Howard is safe at third. Luis swipes third base. Bit of a risk with two outs, but if they're going to give it to you, take it. This bounce away. Here he comes. 88's coming home, and the Sox have the first run of the 2021 season. He lost his chain. He lost a little, uh, a little bit of gold while he was charging home down the third base line. Yelich in the right center. Way back and on the ground of Kepler. Kepler was there on a wire shot. Could not make the play. Uh, Kepler just had it in and out of the glove. Huge break. Faltering defensively here in this ninth inning. Bryce Harper had some shoes uh, to display during introductions earlier today. That is great. I think Freddie was disappointed when he didn't come out and wear them. They actually had spikes on the bottom. They did. <laughs> they did. Junior Gary is on in a pitching change, and before we get to him, a little bit of uh, a little bit of an opportunity to learn more about Kyle Tucker on our Chime Player Spotlight. Nicknamed Ted back in his rookie season because somebody said he swung it like Ted Williams. No big deal there, Blummer. No, no big comp. No big shoes to fill in. Just Ted Williams. I know when he was coming up, we called him Teddy Tucker after Teddy ball game, but he came with a pretty high prospect tag put on him. And if you remember during the Jeff Luno era here in Houston, he was a highly coveted player by other teams, but they did not want to let him go. And he's finally getting his opportunity in the big leagues now. He's aboard after the one out single and he's running throw down to second trickles through and Tucker wisely decides to stay at second base. His first bag of the year. And it didn't take him long to run against the new angel pitcher, right hander Javi Guerra. Right hander Junior Guerra. Beg your pardon. Yeah, big jump on the throwing tools for Junior Guerra. Yeah, I think to Gooby's point, they may have keyed on that. That's why he was going so early in this count to make sure he got into scoring position for Diaz. Garris 1 0 pitches in for a strike. Just the fifth stolen base for the Astros as a team this year. Guerra making his sixth appearance of the season. He has been effective in albeit limited duty. First runs of the season didn't come until his uh, last outing, his only outing on the last homestand. And that was control problems. Had some walks in there. His fastball's pretty good. He's 91 to 95. He's got a curveball, but he's got a great split finger fastball. He throws a lot. Ball in two strikes to count to Oledmus Diaz. Throw the hands at it. On the ground. Iglesias to third, not in time. Rolling the dice there. Jose thought he had enough time to get the lead runner, but it wasn't the case, and everybody's safe. And not worth taking another look at. There's not a lot of experience for Jose Rojas at third base as well, so you. A lot of times as a third baseman, if you have maybe Anthony Rendon, a veteran there, you're going to be closest to the bag. Glaciers anticipate he saw that guy. Tucker trying to go, makes a quick throw. He's able to slide in and get the inside part of the bag and avoid the tag. Now more pressure for the Astros. Miles Straw had a big triple that drove in a run back in the second. The first of two three run innings against Alex Cobb tonight that eventually would drive him from the game in the bottom half of the third. Oh, and one to count to Miles Straw.
Plummer, who was the fastest guy you ever played with? Oh, man. I was on a ball club with Dave Roberts. He was pretty quick. We had a center fielder, Mike Cameron, who I thought could absolutely fly. Covered a lot of ground in center field. That's a great question. Michael Bourne. Ooh, Michael Bourne. Very fast. On the ground, hot shot for Rojas. Recovers and gets Diaz at second. But scoring easily from third is Kyle Tucker, and it's 7 0 Houston. Never easy to turn a double play with Miles Straw running, but that had a, at least a bit of a shot if, if Jose Rose is able to get that cleanly and get it over the Fletcher, who's got a tremendous as far as getting rid of the baseball on the transfer at second base. So now Martin Maldonado, two RBIs for Miles Straw tonight. That would have been in circling back to our earlier discussion on, you know, Dusty Baker's lineup construction. We'll have to table this as it looks like that pop is going to end the inning. Yeah, we'll talk about the Astros lineup as we continue, but Houston strikes for one more courtesy of Miles Straw once again. End of four, seven, nothing Astros. Gorgeous evening for baseball here at Minute Maid Park. The Astros opening day. And it's six to one St. Louis. Astros have lost seven in a row. Lowest scoring team in Major League Baseball. 15 and 30 is an ugly start, and that's a big hill to overcome. It's a high drive. Home run. Astros win again. The Astros clinch the wild card. This game tied 6 6 in the bottom of the 18th inning. Lining it to left. It's gone. Holy Toledo. What a way to finish. This ballpark is just ready to erupt. They're down a run. One went away. The pitch in the air deep to left. It's gone. The Astros lead four to two. In the air left field and Pools is given St. Louis the lead. You know what? Every single guy in our ball club says this is the way it's supposed to be. That game is gone. Let's get on to the next game. They're down to an out. Fly ball in the right field. And the Houston Astros are going to the World Series for the first time in franchise history. Seven nothing Astros as we hit the top half of the fifth inning. Let's uh, pay off our poll question from earlier. We asked which free agent shortstop is going to get the biggest deal this winter or whenever. And 40% of you say Corey Seager. And I kind of think that's true. Hey Blummer, fill us in on some of the conversation in Houston around the uh, six for 120 that Carlos Correa said not even close to that the Astros offered recently. Yeah I don't think he appreciated that and you know if you actually break down some of the numbers you can understand why he didn't appreciate that I think he wanted to get a little bit closer to what Francisco Lindor was getting his Puerto Rican friend and he wants to believe that he can go out there and be one of the more dominant shortstops. I think the only knock if you had one against Carlos Correa was how often is he going to be on the field. He averages just over 100 games a, a played per season since coming into the big leagues. And another thing you got to remember about Carlos Correa is if he's on the field he's going to he's going to give you the best effort as far as defense and offense. But don't forget his postseason numbers as often as the Astros have been in the postseason. He's he's going up on some of those historic ladders and getting marking his name in some of those history books in the playoffs. Jose Rojas leads things off in the Angels fifth. Yeah I, I think you hit on the big point there because the brighter the lights the bigger the stage the better that guy gets and it's kind of hard to quantify that right we're a, 
we're a business that's made of regular season numbers. There's a base hit for Rojas, his second of the game. I do agree with you that the, uh, you know, six years at 120 million for Correa, when you consider the money that other guys are making, most notably Lindor, and what Seager's going to get, what Story's going to get, that's not going to get it done. It, it ain't close. And if it means Carlos Correa has to pack his bags and go someplace else, it sounds like he's prepared to do that. The guy that I'd be concerned with is Javi Baez at this point because he had a really uneven 2020, off to kind of an uneven start this year. And in a contract year, you hope that, that that's not in his head because he is such an electrifying performer. Well, he's one of the best at his defensive position. You talk about a quick tag at second base and incredible power. But when I'm looking at those shortstop guys, Seager, Corey Seager is incredible. I mean, he hits the ball so hard to all fields. MVP of the World Series. I mean, he's only getting better. He's staying healthier. So Corey Seager there. And Trevor Story, one of the best base runners in the game. The shortstop with great power with Colorado. A ball and a strike to count to Kurt Suzuki, who struck out, culminating a 13 pitch at bat back in the third. Now, we had a chance to see Trevor Story out there in Colorado just recently. I was surprised to see that he did not have a home run yet this far in the season. So, kind of plays into that Javier Baez kind of mix where they're off to that slow start. But I would imagine that all of these guys are going to be grateful to have a 162 game season to be able to correct some of those things and put up big numbers to go get paid. Good slider swung on and missed once again. We've been saying that all night. Yeah, you know, the one guy who, whose timing was the poorest as far as that's concerned and he had no way of controlling it was Marcus Simeon, right? He, his contract, he came due the year after COVID last year and he got the one year 18 million dollar deal to go to Toronto and play second base. He'll be back on the market again at the end of this season. Two and two. And to your point Mac Marcus Simeon I, I saw him a number of times against the Angels really good power fastballs in turned into a really really solid defensive shortstop working a lot with Ron Washington when he was there with the A's and he's a very good shortstop he runs well with good power so for me he's still going to get paid a lot of money going into the offseason even though there's some great shortstops to go along with him. Yeah I agree with you even though he's the oldest of the group I think there's a multi year deal out there a big one for him as well. 2 2 to Suzuki hit in the air out to left field and hit pretty well. Room and time, however, for Straw. And that's the first down of the inning. Blummer, you know, one of the early kind of pseudo criticisms on Christian Javier was strikeouts and fly balls, right? Doesn't make them hit it on the ground as much as they'd like hasn't really mattered tonight because the fly balls have been warning track variety and he's racked up a near double digit strikeout total so who cares if he's given up fly balls. <laughs> yeah you can definitely say that tonight. But he's done a good job with that fastball up the slider has really been that one that we have been talking about all game long has created the swing and miss you've seen a couple called for strikes he's gotten chase off the plate. It's just amazing to me to see that slider spin in the not necessarily on the edges but catch a little bit more of the plate than you would like to see and he still gets the swing and miss. Or he gets him just yanked just foul thankfully. Well among the nine strikeouts tonight he has twice victimized David Fletcher who is one of the hardest players to strike out in all of baseball. One out one on Astros on top seven nothing that's bounced up the middle backhanded by Diaz to Correa they get the out at second base a fine play up the middle.
Yeah, wide decision by Gray to get right to the bag as Diaz to be able to get the coverage. He's on the shortstop side of the bag, a quick flip, and gets Rojas just barely at second base. Outstanding defensive play. The Astros, one of the better defensive teams over the last number of seasons. Come up with a big play here to prevent any kind of a rally getting started here with a ground ball out. Javier loving that defense. There's that ground ball that Matty wanted. <laughs> is that his first ground ball out tonight? It is. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And here's Otani now who has flied to center and struck out. And Shohei bounces it right to Guriel. Nothing comes of the leadoff single. Christian Javier. A career high workload and in route to a career type night on top seven nothing. He just smokes it. Forget about it. Oh, my goodness. Great baseball right there. And that one's going to go. That ball was crushed. And this is going to do it. Oh, my. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority the office of the commissioner and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Adding to this unique viewing experience don't forget to check out YouTube's live game commentary featuring MLB the Angels the Astros and a select group of YouTube creators. You can View the live game commentary on your computer, mobile device, or smart TV. We'll be keeping an eye on the discussion throughout the broadcast. Be clever. There's a chance we'll use your comments on the show. Mike Trout has come out of the ball game after being hit in the elbow a couple of innings ago. Tried to stick around. Scott Shebler has taken over in center field for him. And if we get word from the trainers table will certainly pass it along we'll assume that Mike's been taken out of the ball game as a precaution in a seven nothing day I think we all understand that Carlos Correa leads things off in the Houston half of inning number five top of the order Correa Brantley and Bregman the Angels have had to go to that alternate site Travel taxi quite often already this year. Shebler had a really nice spring training with the Angels, and there were a lot of people that thought he had a puncher's chance to make the opening day squad right out of camp. And as it turns out, he was pressed into duty this week because of a flurry of injuries. Hey, look out! Three and one to Correa. Full count three and two to Correa. The 
It's taken me a couple innings to notice this, but Carlos Correa has gone to a decided fashion statement at the plate. Sends a breaking ball into left for another base hit. Third of the game. He's aboard. Mike Trout's out of the game. Uh, but Mike Trout's Mike picked up this before Mike exited the occasion. Aye. Aye. I see you talking about the new map. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played it tonight. Yeah. Dude, I thought one? it was a slider, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't pick up the ball here, though. His stuff, is, his stuff looks like that, too. I face him in the Yeah. Hey, if I have a pad, bro. Is he talking about if he had a pad? If he had a, a pad on his elbow? I, I, I believe so. Somebody order Mike a, tra a trout a pad. It's a bouncing I'm ball to the right side. I'm thinking if he didn't have the pad on that elbow. Ah, yeah. got it, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, that's okay. what it was, yeah. Yeah. I, I, when you look at his numbers, he doesn't hit the, real, the ball real well here in this ballpark. And he's, he's got a 218 career hitter in Minute Maid Park. So there is some validity to the fact that he doesn't see the ball real well because everywhere else, Trout has hit the ball well. Well, your, your reaction when he was hit by that pitch, Gooby, was that y you even said at the time it looked like Mike didn't think that the ball was going to come in on him like that, which, again, would back so, up the statement. Yeah, like he was reading. He was thinking slider. He was ready to track it out over the plate. And, you know, that got him pretty good. Without that, that pad on his elbow area, he would, would be in trouble on that one. Here's Alex Bregman now. He's been on base in all three of his plate appearances tonight. Two singles. And he was hit by a pitch in the second. And another base hit. Man, he and Correa are going nuts at the top of this order. Carlos is going to score. And the Astros are on the board again. Astros doing a good job of just fighting off some of these pitches again the exit velocity is not going to light up any radar gun but the fact that they're getting these hits with runners in scoring position means everything to them right now. Yeah Blumber I was just going to say the same thing the exit velocity radar gun was not going to be real high here tonight but you look up you got eight runs that's all that matters. Look at that. Alex Bregman has already matched his three hit total from all of last year. Now it's big Jordan Alvarez. Fire still hot as they say. One out one on and one in. Hey Blummer I want to get back to uh, to what Mike Trout was talking about. Look you played here for many years. You have broadcast here for many years. Why for a visiting player might it be harder than someplace else to pick up the ball. Well, I'm glad, glad you brought up the fact that I did play here. When I did play here, they had Towles Hill out in center field. They had that little bit of a ramp up of a hill in center field about 430 feet away, and the batting eye was a little bit bigger. But back in 2016-17, they altered that, took away the hill, brought in the batting eye, and kind of, they didn't really condense it, but it's just not as big as it was in the past. And they also added LED lighting it really brightened things up in this ballpark and early on a lot of the home ball players the Astros most notably had issues picking up spin because the LED was so bright on that baseball it was tough to pick up the seams. Wow when did the LED go in here. I believe it was around eight 17 18 19 was when they were starting to make these adjustments but the LEDs came in and what's different about other ballparks here at Minute Maid Park is that they don't have that expansive outfield. The, the bleachers aren't exactly all that high. So the lights are a little bit closer to the field. Alvarez sends one out to the scoreboard and left. It's handled by Upton for route number two. Well, but did the batters feel like it's easier to see with the roof closed or with the roof open? Not that it's open a lot, but in the beginning of the year, you have a chance to have it open. Yeah, and here in Houston, if you have a chance to leave any roof open and get out of the Freon zone of our houses <laughs> and dome stadiums, they take advantage of it. But uh, the, if you ask the players, man, man for man, they want to play with that roof closed because they love the controlled environment. Here's Guriel now. A couple of walks for him, one coming with the bases loaded. 
I, I think as fans we like to uh, kind of read all the scandal theories into the conditions. Right, for roof open, roof, roof closed. We all bought into it in Arizona for many years when Schilling and, and Johnson were there. And Kurt Schilling always wanted the roof closed when he started. So everybody kind of jumped on that as a scandal theory. Guriel sends a fly ball out to shallow right. Fletcher tracking it to retire the side. Not before one more can come home for the Astros. We played five complete. All Houston at minute made tonight. Now Lanier has to feel great about his ball club right now. And they can put a banner right up next to that 1980 Western Division Championship banner with a win this afternoon. Ball two and strike one to Maldonado. And he popped him up. Nothing doing top half of the first inning here at the Astrodome. Here's that 2-2 pitch. And he got him. That's the third for Scott. Swing and a miss. Three up and three down as we're in the middle of the fourth inning at the Astrodome. No balls and two strikes. Listen to the crowd. They're in on it now. They know what's going on. He got in. Strike three. Mike Scott has struck out the side. What a game Mike Scott is throwing on clincher day. That'll do it. No hitter going here for Mike Scott. Fly ball to left center field. And Scott still has the no-hitter going. He has it going through eight innings. Oh, boy, what drama, Gene. Two outs. Nobody on. Top of the ninth. Scott has not given up a hit. There it is. New to the MLB Game of the Week for the 2021 season, the YouTube Player of the Game. Fans watching on mobile devices and computers can vote for which player will receive a trophy during the post-game show. Stay tuned for the Player of the Game polling options coming up a little bit later on. Yeah, I would suggest Carlos Correa. Uh, let's see, who else would I suggest? Christian Javier for sure. Michael Brantley's had a nice night. Bregman. A lot of options on a night that has been pretty much a Houston story tonight at Minute Maid Park. And the Astros go to the bullpen. A career high pitch count and a career high strikeout tally for the young 24 year old starter Christian Javier. He's gone after five in favor of Brian Abreu. Scott Shebler the first to face him. Shebler batting in Trout's spot in the order. Came on after Mike was hit in the elbow by a pitch back in the fourth. So Shebler, Walsh, and Upton for the Angels. Oh. Hey, Matt, what about putting Dusty Baker in his player of the game for putting Carlos Correa at the leadoff spot for the first time <laughs> in his career? I like that idea. That's a great idea. That is a great, yeah, it is. Do we get to visit with the player of the game tonight? Because if we do, yeah, I'd vote for Dusty just because I love talking to the guy. Two balls and two strikes to count to Scott Shebler, who we talked about earlier is having a really good spring training for the Angels. But when the decisions were made who to break camp with Juan Ligar has got a nod in the outfield because of his defensive prowess. And Shevler's worked it to a full count three balls and two strikes. Yeah that was an issue last year defensively in the outfield you bring in a gold glover former gold glover with the New York Mets and Juan Ligar's that's why he was so he had a really solid Spring swing the bat, but his defense was the difference maker. It was also unfortunate news about Dexter Fowler, too, Gooby. Yeah, they expected him to be the switch hitter, 
solid defender in the outfield be the everyday guy on occasion give Juan Lagares everyone a chance in the outfield to give a rest because he can play all three outfield positions so well caught looking at a called strike three Brett Dolan has a little bit more on the former Red and Dodger Scott Shepler now guys he told the media that He's been playing basically without a shoulder for the last couple of years. The doctor went in and found out that there was probably a significant tear going back to 2017. It hurt to pick up the bat. I can't imagine how he played through that for a couple of years. It must have been a mess. But as an Iowa native, I can appreciate that toughness. There aren't many guys, by the way, that come out of DMAC, Des Moines Area Community College, to find their way to the major league shoulder or not. You corn-fed Iowa guys, man, you all find each other. <laughs> this and if he hurt his shoulder in no 2017 doubt. that's the year he hit 30 big boys I mean he had a great year in Cincinnati that season it's a chopper on the ground at first and Abreu covers for out number two So two gone for the reliever of Rayu, and he'll go to work on Justin Upton now. This has been all Astros kind of from the jump. Three in the second, three more in the third, lone runs in the fourth and fifth. Christian Javier was outstanding on the mound. And here's Upton now. This has not been a very kind place for the Angels in general. You know, we talked about it as it related to Mike Trout. And as much as the Angels finally won a season series from the Astros last year, it's something that hasn't happened very often, they entered play tonight having dropped 14 of their last 17 games in this ballpark. That dates back to 2018. A lot of that is that the Astros have been very good over that stretch. But this has not been a very kind place to the Angels when they come visit. And I really think it comes down to the way they were able to have their pitchers. And they've had a great pitching staff over the years, running a lot of those four seam fastballs, upper part of the strike zone. And a lot of the Angels hitters use that lower third, and that's where they do the damage. That's a lot of credit to pitching coach for the Astros, Brent Strom. He's kind of created an, a whole nother legacy with what he's been able to do with pitchers here at Minute Maid Park. But it started with him and the philosophy of throwing that four seam fastball up in the zone. And what that did is it got some swing and miss. It got some pop ups. But at the same time it opened up the bottom part of the zone for some of these high spin breaking ball type guys that they've tried to get here in Houston. Yeah he's a good one plumber and you you have the uh, the pleasure of, of getting to tap his brain daily. Uh, he is not a guy that goes out there and digs himself and talks about his philosophy. He's a grinder man and he's made so many pitchers better coming to Houston that I think the results speak for themselves. He doesn't have to pump himself up. And, and very true what you said about him being a grinder. He you know he's been in the game a very long time and then moved here to Houston to become the pitching coach. And really embraced the analytics and found a way to marry that with his eyes and his experience to make these guys that much better. You know, I've heard him talk about, you know, adjusting guys' sliders to a quarter of an inch of, of release and, you know, extension through the zone and things like that. So he's really adapted to this current game and made his knowledge that much more valuable. Oh and to the count to Albert Pujols. And had it not been for Tommy go. John as uh, as a story I know that Astros fans have heard many times uh, that UCL ligament replacement surgery would have been known as Brent Strom surgery because he was the second guy to have it after Tommy John did. Still low and two I just think pools. it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, you know, bring up that point because we have talked about it a lot. And Brent Strom kind of makes fun of it also, knowing that he was the second one to get that Tommy John surgery. But he always says, imagine if they didn't call it TJ surgery and I was the first one to get it. 
Yeah, yeah that's a good point. It all worked out for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going in for my BS surgery. Yeah, it doesn't head, does it? <laughs> it's not the same gravitas. I got my TJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> San Diego guy. I'd imagine that Brent Strom was watching with interest when Joe Musgrove finally pitched the Padres' first ever no hitter a couple of weeks ago in Arlington. The one two to Pujols. Yeah Joe Musgrove has a connection coming up through the Astros organization eventually being traded away but it meant a lot to Astro fans to watch Joe Musgrove do that but for you and I Matty having experience both being Padres in our career I was I was in shock and just pure joy watching him do it for the franchise. You bet such a great story for a local guy. Pujols to right field. That's got a chance if it stays fair, and that one's gone. Albert Pujols to the opposite field to get the Angels on the board in the sixth. Boy, you look over the last number of seasons, how many home runs did Albert hit that way? 665 career home runs for Albert, 61 now in his career versus the Astros for the machine. Yeah, this this is not a foreign sight for fans here at Minute Maid Park. Pitch up and away and he goes with it. I'm not too sure, boys. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This one, yeah, I, Blumber, I'm with you. The, all boundary calls are reviewable. Oh boy, that's a foul ball. Yeah, you can see the baseball. And the white going about the yellow pole. I think the only thing that that might make this call stand is if they can determine that the ball actually touched the pole. To me, it looked like it missed it. We'll give you plenty of looks here uh, at home on YouTube. I don't think you can tell if it hit the pole or not, guys. See Albert back there. Did Can you see Albert in the back yeah, room? Yeah. <laughs> he said it hit the ball. Call on the field was Homer. Albert's still looking. Max yeah, Stassi knows this ballpark really well. He says, yeah, it hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Max Stassi back there, yep. Yep. He said, yeah, I know this ballpark really well. Albert saying tell you what Matt you have been you've been involved in some interesting replay reviews throughout the course of the season already this year. Yeah. Yes. But this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will expose an overexposed play by play guy like controversial replay reviews. Let me tell you. I just can't tell if it hit the pole or not guys. I, I don't think anybody can tell based on this. And if the call on wow, the is really tough. If the call on the field is Homer. Like, how, how do you over? God, man, this is a tough one. Yeah, and that's the biggest key, Matt. Is the call on the field is what's being sent back to New York, and there, is there anything to overturn that? Albert's saying, "Man, don't take this. Would be my first opposite field homer in two years. Don't take it away." Yeah, it's gonna stand. He knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Rendon, Houston native, said, yeah, that, that's yeah. definitely at the foul pole. Yeah. I've been to this ballpark a lot. <laughs> if Albert Pujols hits a ball that's anywhere near an outfield fence in Minute Maid Park, Somebody is going to definitely think it's a home run. That's for sure. <laughs> Climbing the all-time home run leaderboard. He's going to have to go crazy in the final year of his 10-year contract to catch Alex Rodriguez as he trails him by 31. So 
somebody threw it back. Hey, I think Albert might want that. He's still saying it deflected off the foul pole. <laughs> <laughs> 0-1, oh, the count to Jose. He's still Iglesias. trying to sell it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to give you some uh, some video tricks here to see if anybody can tell if it hit the pole or not. Maybe it did, man. I don't know. I just can't tell. Let's take a look at it again. Sure, it looked like it did. Yeah, I mean, we can't get too much tighter on it. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter what we think because the call stands. By the way, did that baseball deflect off the foul pole and deflect it off a fan's hand into another fan's hand as well? So that baseball had all kinds of stuff deflection-wise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing is greased. <laughs> Still 0 and 2 to Jose Iglesias. And that's wrapped out to shortstop. Correa's got it. Throw just barely gets him, but the Angels do get on the board. Third of the season for Albert, and his first to the opposite field in two years. It's 8 to 2 Houston. Chance for the first one, two, three inning of the night for young Chase Wright if he can get Manny Ramirez here in the third. That one is hit well. That one is on its way. And goodbye. Over everything. Onto the streets of Boston. Hit well to deep right center field. Going back at Bray, you near the Red Sox bullpen. That one's gone. Back to back home runs. Ramirez and Drew. And the Sox are back within three to two. Swung on. There goes the deep left. That one's headed for New Hampshire. What a shot! And they're playing home run derby early this year at Fenway Park. Three booming home runs in a row. That ball is hit. Cabrera won't even turn around. Number four in a row. Four consecutive home runs. This one by Jason Baratek. We're talking record-setting territory now. The first time in Red Sox history. Four home runs in a row. Download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch-by-pitch, pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and much more. So we've had these poll questions all night. They've been a lot of fun. Uh, here's my favorite, by the way. Who would make the best road trip companion from L.A. to Houston? Joe Madden? Nolan Ryan? Dusty Baker? Or Tory Hunter? We just put Tory in there. Connections to both sides, of course. <laughs> That's a great question. No wrong answer there. Eight to two, Houston. As Junior Guerra continues, so get Kyle Tucker, Ledmus Diaz, and Miles Straw back with Mark Gubiza in Anaheim. And from Houston, Brett Dolan and Jeff Blum, Matt Vaskersian here at MLB Network. We're all coming to you tonight on YouTube on this exclusive MLB telecast. One and one the count to Tucker who has singled scored and stolen a base tonight. By the way Joe Madden has this thing called an RV called the Cousin Eddie so that might be a pretty fun little road trip to go in his RV from Houston L.A. Ball and two strikes. I think what Gooby is saying is that we could all jump in there with Joe Madden and have a great trip. <laughs> <laughs> I 
What, what you know don't we, he likes the music. If we all get in Joe's van and, and Dusty's riding shotgun, we get in the back and we just listen to their stories. <laughs> Sprayed out to the left side of the infield. And there's one gone to start the sixth. You know, we asked both of the managers uh, the same question that we asked Dylan Bundy when we visited with him earlier. What the last thing that they watched on YouTube as far as an instructional video would go is how many times a day do you find yourself trying to do something unable to do said task and having to YouTube it. And for Joe Madden, it was how to hit my driver. And Dusty's was much more interesting, I thought. How to plant and grow Texas onions in California. <laughs> <laughs> that is everything you need to know about Dusty right there. <laughs> Renaissance man. Two balls and no strikes to count to Oledmus Diaz. You think about the baseball that that guy has been witness to in his career. The career itself, what he had to endure in the minors, being a, in the Marine Corps during his playing career, this is a base hit. Diaz has done that a couple times tonight. And that's his third of the evening. There were four angels surrounding that baseball, and not one of them could get to it. That is how it's going for the Astros tonight. Yeah, Joe Madden was talking a lot about his golf game. I'll tell you what, the Astros have brought out the sand wedge really well tonight. Worked the fluff in there. Phil Mickelson would be happy with this action on the sand wedge today. I mean, they're bringing back the old school Bellotta ball for this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not one of those nights where the collective exit velocity of the Astros is going to impress you, but they do lead by six in the bottom of the sixth inning and now it's Miles Straw who's had a nice night. Drove in a run with a triple in the second and drove in another on a fielder's choice play in the fourth. Boy, today was like a uh, YouTube, ex you know, structural video from David Fletcher on how to get base hits without exit velocity for the Astros. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just when you, just when you think you need to square up a ball and, and barrel it, if we may borrow the Statcast term to do damage, it, tonight is proof of the contrary. Woo! The Astros' biggest hit and run total since the first week of the season. And it comes at a time when it is most needed just to revisit what we talked about earlier tonight Blummer having lost nine of ten really rough road trip through Seattle and Denver and home cooking is tasting really good tonight. Yeah I completely whiffed on the idea of them having to score runs with the home run ball but it's been the hitting with runners in scoring position that's done them very well tonight going four for ten in this game so far. And even going four for ten, they've left nine runners on. Two balls and two strikes to count to Miles Straw. On the ground is shortstop. No way you're going to turn two with that guy's speed. And Fletcher knew it didn't even bother with a turn. So Straws aboard with two gone. We were talking about Martin Maldonado's contract extension a little bit earlier. And after a quick pitching change, we're going to revisit that topic. I I think Joe has already made the move because Ben Rowan was up and it looks like Ben Rowan is on his way into the game. The pitching change with the man on and two away in the last of the sixth. 
We'll be right back. Not a lot of 20 year olds not only perform well, but perform well in every aspect of the game that quickly. I don't think anybody, including Trout, thought he'd have the kind of year that he had in 2012. It was a season with almost too many Mike Trout highlights to count, but there was one signature moment that came to define his gifts more famously than any other. This one's at the center field and deep. Back out into Trout, back it goes, it is caught! Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout! Takes a home run away. What a play by the 20 year old in center field, and you bet he's smiling. That was an unbelievable play. That catch that he made in Baltimore, I was I almost passed out because of the adrenaline that was in me. Just watching him jump up and reach over that wall. Mike Trout with another spectacular grab. It was one of the greatest catches I've seen with my eyes. I've made some, and people say, oh, Torrey, that was an awesome catch. But I, hadn't, I didn't see it, you know? And just watching it, it was the greatest vision I've ever had. <laughs> All season long, Major League Baseball will honor frontline and essential workers who continue to lift up their fellow citizens during the pandemic. Thank you, frontline heroes. COVID-19 vaccinations are safe and effective. Join the team and get the vaccine to help us all get back to doing what we love together. Visit MLB.com slash COVID-19 resources for more information. Two out pitching change with a man on. And an 8-2 Astros lead as Joe Madden has opted for right-hander Ben Rowan. You expect a slider from Ben Rowan. He throws about 75% of his pitches slider. Also throw a little two-seam sinking fastball. Martin Maldonado, the batter, is the Angels' shade, the left side of the diamond. Maldonado has doubled and scored tonight. And Rowan, as so many relievers do, start with a check in at first base. Ben made his Angels' debut April 14th in Kansas City. That was his first big league appearance since 2016. He has been a great story of stick to itiveness. And the sidewinder is in for a strike. Ben didn't get into any uh, game action during the recent homestand. A lot of that coming because part of it was canceled that series with the Twins. And it's 0 1 to Martin Maldonado. No stolen base credited there as Miles Straw just advanced on defensive indifference. I say give him the bag. I don't believe in defensive indifference. Yeah, it's still it's only a six run game in the sixth inning. I think that's a stolen base. Yeah. So I would score it. A ball and a strike to count to Martin Maldonado. Wow, Rowan gets a call below the strike zone. And Maldonado sends a fly ball the other way to right. Jared Walsh has it. A couple of Angels combine on a scoreless bottom of the sixth. Getting to the back third. It's taken a while. And it's 8-2 to two Houston.
That deserves a wow. That's over to 390 sign in left center. Oh, that first pitch crushing. Oh, man. Lean into it. Here's a guy that throws the ball 101 on one half of the inning, and the next one is the first pitch 450 feet. Oh, man. I mean, man. that ball was crushed. Wow. That was ridiculous. And Trout gets a hold of one into the corner and left, and he got it! Homer's in 10 straight, two-run shot for Trout. Matty, I'm going with you to Vegas at some point. Great call on that one, just kind of thinking, okay, let's get that home run streak going. I mean, everything going the Halo's way tonight. Google Cloud is helping to power StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball. And with the help of StatCast, powered by Google Cloud, let's take a look at the Albert Pujols homer. Albeit a little controversial, slid past the fair pole. It was a call that was reviewed and upheld. Albert was thrilled. <laughs> yeah, 665th of his career. And one will probably go, you know what? I'll take it. Little foul pole scraper. Carrying on like a guy who uh, hadn't hit one before, right? A giddy, like a 19 year old rookie. Here's Jose Rojas leaving things off for the Angels. That's really the lone bright spot for the Angels on this series opener because the home side has really dominated from the opening bell. Three in the second, three in the third, lone runs in the fourth and fifth. Christian Javier was outstanding. And it's up to Brian Abreu and company here to hold the six run lead. Three balls and no strikes to Jose Rojas. Just a great story. Grew up in the Anaheim area. Angel fan, 36 round draft pick. One hit coming into the game, two oh. hits tonight. Yeah, you know, if 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 you expand that narrative a little bit, Gooby, and talk about hits for a hometown kid. And of course, born in Anaheim, high school in Anaheim for Jose. And you start digging through the major league record books, wondering who's the guy that had the most hits for his hometown team. It, it just happens to be the guy with the most hits. Pete in Cincinnati. Yeah, Pete in Cincinnati. Strikeout for Abreu, his first of the inning, of course. But yeah, all 3,358 for Pete count because he went to Western Hills High School in Cincinnati. Nope, I don't think anybody's ever going to catch that. Next up would be Cal Ripken. If you want to count Aberdeen High School in, in Aberdeen, Maryland, which is about 40 minutes away from Camden Yards. Granted, it's not it's not the city proper. Here's Kurt Suzuki now. Ball and no strikes the count to Suzuki, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Hey, yeah, got him. Oh, man. How many hit batsmen tonight? Is that three or four? Trout in the elbow, now Suzuki in the elbow. Bregman got hit in the elbow. Doggone it. They're getting squared up running the point of that elbow too. It's not exactly an ideal situation, but that was a little bit of a slider that never broke and ended up just spiraling itself into the elbow of Kurt Suzuki. 
not sure, too sure those pads are working. I know. Did do everything right as far as turning the body, turning the head, but that elbow gets hit right on that pad, just like Trout. Reminds us that we do get word on Mike Trout's status, and the Angels are calling it a left elbow contusion. And as painful as that word may be, it's certainly better than the alternative. And Suzuki's aboard. Hey, why is it, uh, as we say hello to our worldwide YouTube audience once again tonight, uh, why is it that pads are, I get it like plastics technology has improved dramatically, but when, you know, Craig Biggio and Barry Bonds were up there padded up, the stuff looked like it gave you a little bit more of a chance. This stuff's very thin. I go back to the old school thing is what I'm saying. It did affect Terry Bonds at all. I know that the way he got through the ball. <laughs> yep, Barry hanging that Barry hanging that thing out over the plate allowed him to get to a lot of pitches. You're right, but the, between Biggio and Bagwell, I know Bigg. I played with him here in Houston, and you could take that elbow guard off of his elbow and put it on somebody's shin guard. He could go back behind the plate and catch with it. That thing was healthy. <laughs> We've got a visit to the mound. It looks like Brent Strom's coming out to chat with uh, with Abreu. A quick chat it was and now David Fletcher digs in. I've often wondered why guys don't go back to that. And then again I'm the kind of guy that stays up at night wondering why the old bubble chest protector that umpires used to use isn't back in vogue. <laughs> because I love the fact that it allowed them to get right up there close and personal with the strike zone. By the way guys uh, I hate to be able to go out and re reference this again but I still have the whole time all time record for Kansas City Royals as far as hit batters. Ooh. Which so a lot of times the baseball just gets away from you. Do you really? You still got the record. Yeah. Walks, wild pitches that hit batters, all those really good things you <laughs> want to be at the top of the list with. Also known <laughs> as black ink, right? When you lead something, you lead in a category, you get a lot of black ink. All you need to do is tell people, check my baseball <laughs> reference page. There's a ton of black Ooh. ink there. Brah. <laughs> <laughs> Counts a ball oh, and two yeah. strikes. One out one on here top of the seventh inning Astros up by six two balls and two strikes now to David Fletcher. And by the way every one of those I was just trying to establish the ball inside that's all I was ever trying to do. Of course. <laughs> yes. The teeth of the Angels lineup really not making an impact tonight. Mike Trout has been removed from the game after walking and being hit by a pitch. Fletcher swats that one past a diving Bregman into left. Well, exactly the scenario Joe Madden wanted to have runners aboard for Shohei Otani, who is off to a striking start. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. Some of the interesting numbers. Top percentile in average exit velo as a hitter his average four seam fastball velocity fifth best out of over a hundred players and perhaps the most underreported aspect of his game Gooby he is fast incredibly fast like the bond white type fast looks like we're going to have a chance to talk more about him after a change because to the bullpen Dusty Baker goes for Brooks Raley and we'll be right back. He just smokes it. Forget about it. Oh, my goodness. Great baseball right there. And that one's gonna go. That ball was crushed. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. Something 
like this is what they came for. Big opportunity for Shohei Otani, who is enjoying full health in 2021. Had it not been for the injuries, no telling what he would have accomplished already. The UCL, the UCL injury came up in 2018. Tommy John, the left knee was a problem on both sides of the scorecard. Surgery to correct that. Forearm strain last August shut him down on the mound. But Otani is overall that Mark Gubaza, and you are seeing him at the peak of his powers this year. Um, what he's thrown on the mound, he cuts 101 miles per hour, exit velocity on a home run, 115.5, but his speed running down the bases is something that is truly remarkable. Oh, and one to count to Otani. Did he even go back to when he found out he had, had to have Tommy John surgery, talked to the doctor and said, you're going to have a Tommy John surgery. That night, he went out and hit two home runs at the plate in Texas, it was incredible to see somebody to have that kind of focus to hit home runs after knowing you're going to have Tommy John surgery. Oh. And Otani behind 0-2. It is Brooks Raley in from the bullpen for the Astros. The lone left-hander in the bunch. Kind of inflated numbers. Again, short sample size. Fewer than seven innings. Slider misses and it's a ball and two strikes. Yeah, it's been those last couple of outings for Brooks Raley that have gotten to him. Giving up a couple of three earned runs in his last two outings. He's heavy on that cut fastball pitched in the KBO a couple of years ago as a starter. And the Astros brought him here and told him to get on that cut fastball and it's been effective for him when he's been able to get on that outside edge. Trying to shoot that outside edge there. It's two balls and two strikes to Otani. And you know what's been a lot of fun watching Otani is that we actually, when we used to be able to get on the field, he is a large human. I mean, he is every bit of six foot four. He's got the build, but when he takes off and run, runs like Gooby's talking about at 29 feet per second, he makes it look easy, effortless. Jam shot off the fists as it squibs out to Correa. He wins the race to the bag. And that's the second out of the inning. Otani well, homered yesterday for the fifth time. One of the four solo shots by the Angels. And Gooby, what was more impressive than this was the pace around the base. This was a home run trot. Look at him. Yeah, I was, wa I was watching the game. I'm looking down. I'm like, he's pretty like. Adam Berzales did when he's going for a home run. He's like, all right, I want to get down there as quick as possible. <laughs> I was laughing so hard how quick he got around the bases. He doesn't want to suppress those stat cast numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Scott Shevler now struck out in his first try in the sixth inning. Wait a minute. Now I'm now I'm thinking you're serious, Plumber. Statcast numbers don't take into account home run trot, do they? I don't think they do. I'm not sure. I hope not. Oh, here we go. That's elite, man. Again, it's your point. It doesn't look like it because he's a big man. Yeah, he got down the line right there at 29.6 feet per second. Two and one to well, Shepard. I can Bo Jackson on his first major league hit. He had a ground ball to second base going down the line. So that was the guy that I would think is the fastest human being I've ever seen in person. I saw him on the football field, but on the baseball field, he could flat out fly, Bo.
And if anybody wants to know when when we used to travel to Anaheim, some of the questions I'd ask you would be about Bo Jackson and his abilities. On a hop perfectly placed for Correa to extinguish the threat. Stretching in Houston in an 8 to 2 Astros lead. This ball hit hard again. Michael Brantley, home run for the third straight opening day. It. Every year as an Astro, Michael Brantley has hit a home run. Uncle Mike. What other teams are saying uncle on yeah. opening day. They're saying Mike, uncle. Alex uh -oh. Bregman on a 2-2 pitch. Drives one deep to left field. That ball's gone. Back to back jacks. Brantley and Bregman. And the Astros now lead 5-1. to one. Back to back bangers. Jordan sends one in the air to center field. Well hit, going all the way back to the wall. That ball is gone! The big man, Jordan Alvarez, hits one to left center field, a three-run shot. And the Astros take a 5-1 to one lead. There we go, we got liftoff. That is not an easy pitch to get, and that's out on the outside corner, and Jordan stays on it, steps on it, and drives it. Check out the Astros YouTube page for insider content, including behind the scenes takes from your favorite Astros players, coaches, dry humor with Steve Sparks, and more. Visit youtube.com slash Astros to subscribe to the channel today. Here are the results from the poll, guys. I'm curious to see how this shook out. Joe Madden uh, finished second to Nolan Ryan. Of course. Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to influence the vote, but Dusty was my guy. I want to get in a car with Dusty and just have him talk. That's it. By the way, if you wanted to laugh forever, Tory Hunter, by the time you got to uh, L.A. from Houston, your ribs would be killing you. <laughs> the stories and the way he makes you laugh, though. <laughs> Blummer is Nolan. Yeah, Nolan, is, Nolan is Ryan he, would be a good one. Is he around a lot these days? Uh, he was, you know, his son Reed Ryan used to be the president of the Astros. He has since moved on. But when Reed was around, Nolan was around a lot more also. And they've actually honored Nolan Ryan a couple of times here in Houston with the Houston Sports Award, inducting him, Dan Pastorini, and some other legends here in Houston into a Hall of Fame locally. But Nolan Ryan is one of the greatest conversations you could ever ask for. We've had him in the booth a couple of times telling stories about those 1980s Astro teams that were competing in the National League West. And just hearing that Southern drawl talk about baseball, there's nothing more pure than that. Oh, yeah. I'd love to be a party to that for sure. Two balls and a strike and to count to Carlos Correa. talking Correa. about <laughs> – sorry, Matt – and Nolan Ryan talking about guys not being able to get three times through a batting order. Nolan Ryan, notorious for going deep into ball games, had a tough time understanding how hard it was for guys nowadays to get that third time through the lineup. Two balls and two strikes to count to Correa. Top of the order here for the Astros in their half of the seventh. Carlos sends the ball the other way out to right. Walsh at the track, one gone. Well, you know, Gooby, I'm curious. We haven't talked about this at length, and I'm, I'm curious about, you know, as somebody who came up in a different era of pitching and pitching pedagogy, you guys were taught how to do it differently. Do you think that guys today want to post up and go longer? And it's, it's front offices that have held them back and changed the training, or is it vice versa I, I think the players and pitchers still want to do that I had a conversation with Garrett Cole a, a couple of years ago about that that whole third time through stuff and he said once I got through the first time through the lineup I was in cruise control I didn't care what they knew I was throwing as we went forward I was going to be effective 
and every guy on the uh, Dylan Bundy if you ever get anybody up when he's uh, in the sixth or seventh inning you better be ready to run away from him as far as the pitching coach and the manager they want to still be out there I know the numbers you know it will tell you third time through batting average goes up but they kind of average that out with the fifth starter as compared to the first starter and second starter of rotation where you get better as the game progresses in my opinion ball and two strikes to Michael Brantley well of all of Nolan Ryan's records that will never be broken here's one that I would offer is just ironclad for the rest of time 222 complete games I mean by the way that's not the record but that's Nolan's number nobody's come on two complete games in a career seems like a pipe dream now that's incredible two and two by the way going back to travel with Nolan Ryan across the country uh, can you imagine if he wasn't happy with you he, he would rob Venturi at some point I say <laughs> no no I don't want Nolan in there just in case he got mad at me <laughs> still two and two to Brantley yeah I, w I would hate to be you know, leaving from Houston, get to El Paso, and all of a sudden we turn around and see Gooby in a headlock. <laughs> I'd be like, Gooby, you're on your own, man. <laughs> oh, Blubber, I thought you were my wingman. You were going to leave me go, huh? <laughs> hey, man, I've seen that dude do some damage. I'm not sure I want part of that. <laughs> Full count, three balls and two strikes. The count to Michael Brantley. Now you mentioned bus trips to El Paso. I just had a Texas League flashback working in the Texas League. And Brantley has a base hit. As we mentioned, uh, you know, there was no wrong answer in that poll question. Who do you want to take a road trip with? Brett, you've been around Dusty for a while now. Give me your give me some of your best Dusty stuff. Well, guys, I don't know if people wanted to travel with Dusty on that road trip, but if you need somebody on that wall, Dusty's your guy. How about him telling us today that five or six years during his career, he had to step away for two weeks in season to do his Marines duty. Camp Lejeune, Quantico, Pendleton. And there were no rehab assignments back then. So he had to come back after a couple of weeks of not picking up a baseball and he had to try and be effective. So whenever it is, Jose Altuve comes back. Whether he works out by himself, he can't do anything. His advice that he's going to get from Dusty is, hey, just pretend like you never left. That's what Ralph Gar told him after three or four seasons of really struggling to come back after spending two weeks every year with the Marines in season. Yeah, that uh, that time with the Marine Corps Reserve is is something that Dusty looks back on with a lot of pride. And you make a great point, Brett. I mean, he's balancing both, trying to establish his major league career at that time. Two balls and a strike to count to Alex Bregman. Yeah, the, the connections to Dusty Baker and Joe Madden, uh, as we take a look at both of them on the oldest active manager board, two very notable games in each of their careers, managing head to head. Of course, the 2002 World Series, which was Dusty's last game as Giants manager, and then Dusty's last game as. Nationals manager in 2017 when Joe Madden's Cubs beat them in the division series. Three balls and a strike now the count to Alex Bregman. Bregman a candidate for our YouTube player of the game tonight three RBI's for him on a three for three night at the plate Ooh. and Rowan pours in a strike full count now yeah 
Yeah, on base all four times, hit by a pitch as well, along, go along with those three singles. So a Mike Trout-like game as far as on-base percentage for Alex Bregman. Got him. And the throw down to second base is not in time. They sent Brantley. Score it as a stolen bag for Michael, his first of the year, as the Astros put the play on there. And it looks like everybody's coming off the field. Did they call Michael out? Let's take a look at what happened here. I, I didn't see I didn't see Brantley end his contact with the bag. I'm not entirely sure what happened right there. The players are off the field. And we'll try to sort things out. They must they scored that a strike them out, throw them out, double play. What in the wide, wide world of sports is it going on here? When you show up to empty stance last year was not the same. Part of my rehab and my motivation to really get back to this team was being able to hear those fans and be able to experience Minute Maid packed to the roof one more time. The noise, the atmosphere, it's unmatched. We come every day and they support us. They're out there screaming and it just makes us want to play better as a team. I think we have the best fans in baseball. The main reason why we play is because of them. This is one of the most community-minded teams that I've ever been on. And, and these guys are very aware that they are part of the community. Uh, I, you know, I had a long conversation with a lot of the guys that donated water. Um, and I had a real long conversation with, you know, with Bregman that always steps up. Yep. You know, you got Altuve and you got Correa and all these guys always step up for the community. You know, I thought that was pretty, uh, you know, pretty cool. So apparently that was scored as a strike him out throw him out double play. We're going to show you some replays to figure out what was going on there. Jared Walsh is the first to bat for the Angels in the eighth. Great catch by Miles Straw. I'll tell you what Miles Straw out in center field. Had some issues out there in Colorado. But here we go back to that strikeout and throw down to second base. Brantley was safe, but the home plate umpire Ron Culpa was all over it as Alex Bregman leaned out over home plate and got right in the way of Kurt Suzuki. And that was the interference call right there to get the double play to end the game. I mean, end the inning, sorry. You don't have to have contact with the batter as a catcher. All it has to be is it peed to throw to second base, and that was called. Sometimes they could put you back at first base, but on that one, call them out at second. We need to re-rack the videotape to sort that out. And we're going to go back to a commercial, or something like a commercial, with one out here in the eighth. We'll be right back. Welcome to Angels Baseball. Tonight, join David Fletcher as he guides you through this relaxing baseball meditation. Be sure you are in a comfortable position. Take a deep breath. And now, David Fletcher. Angels baseball. Mike Trout home run. Helmet nachos. Andrew Heaney strikeout. 
the rally monkey. Albert Pujol's milestone. The big A. Anthony Rendon defensive highlight. Lighting up the halo. David Fletcher. David Fletcher. This has been an Angels Baseball Meditation. Don't miss a minute of exciting Angels action. Head to the Angels YouTube page to catch big moments, interviews from players and alumni, and more. Visit YouTube dot com slash angels and subscribe to the channel today. That dude in the throwback jersey looked like Fred Lynn. There's Justin Upton, the first to face the new pitcher right-hander Joe Smith on from the Astros bullpen, trying to protect a six-run lead with one away and the bases empty in the eighth. Joe Smith could use a clean outing right here. It's been rough. Last three and two thirds innings, he's given up eight earned runs. That three quarter arm delivery from the veteran gives you a fastball about 86 miles an hour with some sink in on, underneath the hands of right handed hitters and then a slider that sweeps across. Ooh. Two balls and a strike to Upton, who's 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Seen a lot of funky arm angles tonight, Gooby, starting with Alex Claudio out of the bullpen, Ben Rowan, and now Joe Smith. Everyone's taking a page out of what's been successful for the Tampa Bay Rays. Different arm angles out of your bullpen, different looks, makes it more difficult for hitters to time it as they go longer in the game. Two two to Upton. There's a shot into left to base hit. So now Albert Pujols. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if those boos are from the uh, the two run shot off the foul pole the other way or the shot off Lidge in 05. <laughs> Could be a combo deal. <laughs> he literally gets booed every at bat. He's at Minute Maid Park every about I've seen now 10 years with the Angels he's get booed every single time a ball and no strikes to Pujols continuing his ascent Brett up the all time leaderboards well he certainly is 665 home runs but I want to take you back Matt to a couple of years ago September 2019 right before an Angels Astros game. Mark Langston had a health scare in the Angels radio booth had to be taken to the hospital. Of course his family wasn't with him. So after the game some Angels personnel showed up and Langston looked up from his hotel room. Pujols came in wanted to pray with him pray for him. Langston told me this week it was just what he needed at that time. We know the impact he's had on the field. The great ones always have an impact as well off the field don't they. It's a great story. Three balls and a strike. Happy to report that uh, Mark Langston is fit and doing great these days. Well I remember going to the hospital that night when we walked in there after the game and saw Albert in there we were just shocked and we had a huge smile on our face to see that Albert made that effort to go all the way to the hospital to see Mark Langston. Full counts of Pujols now three and two. So so much of his large and his humanitarian work has gone uh, below the radar if not completely unreported and that that human touch just a small small example of why Albert is so beloved full count to him three two Smith strikes him out on a pass that Albert would love to have back Well, 
point. Joe Smith played a number of years, successful years, with the Angels. Really, really good friends with Albert Pujols and Mike Trout. Always has a long conversation. Goes to visit each other when they're in town. But uh, Albert's not going to want to visit him after that fastball there down and in because if he made contact, that was going to be off his back leg. Here's Iglesias. That's going to be a problem for the Astros, and Jose's going to leg that out as an infield single. <laughs> That's so good. Doesn't feel great about it, oh. but uh, yeah, there's a relationship <laughs> there as well. And now it's Rojas. Jose's had a nice night tonight. Ledmus Diaz is out in short right in the uh, Beer League Rover position. Ball and no strikes to count to Rojas. Boy, the average exit velocity for a major league hit is about what 88.3 <laughs> miles per hour. Oh, I'm guessing there's 20 hits today. <laughs> there's got to be about 17 of them well below that. <laughs> yeah, the radar gun is going to be intact by the end of this game. It will be fine. <laughs> there have only been one, two, three, four, five, six balls hit over 98 miles an hour. That last hit by uh, there have been a much the Glacius was a 60 mile an hour 12 foot rocket up the third baseline. <laughs> a ball yeah, that's and two a physics strikes. class in itself right there. <laughs> two and two. Joe Madden has said uh, as recently as this spring training that what we can't explain with math we mistakenly attribute to luck. Joe Smith in and out of trouble in the eighth. To the bottom of the inning all Astros in Houston tonight. And I'm a local Houston artist, and we're here at Minute Maid Park, painting a mural in center field. Hi, my name is Ethan Brandon. I'm Rati Hickman. My name is Naib, and I'm a student from the Art Institute of Houston. And I'm here at Minute Maid Park working on a mural project. This is honestly an amazing opportunity for me. I don't get to work with people that do graphic design or people that do murals and painting, and now I'm kind of getting an idea of how to have an idea and put it in physical form. The concept is Orbit sliding into home plate, basically just saying welcome home, uh, welcome back to the stadium, welcome back fans, welcome back players, just to really unify everyone. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Chime with Mark Gubazad, Angel Stadium, Jeff Blum and Brett Dolan at Minute Maid Park, Matt Vaskersian, and the Astros after the strong start by Christian Javier. A couple of three-run innings have never been challenged tonight. In fact, we have the finalists for our player of the game vote. Alex Bregman, Carlos Correa, or Christian Javier. You can vote now. Voting remains open. Until the final out of the game, we'll announce the player of the game on our post-game coverage tonight, right after play-by-play. -play. Jordan Alvarez is single to walk. 
Who do you got, Gooby? Uh, I'm going with Javier. He was so good. He set the tone for him tonight. If it wasn't him, I would still go with my right-in vote of Dusty Baker, but I'm going to stay with Javier <laughs> with the way he threw the night. Okay, fair enough. Blummer, do you want to try to influence the voting? Who do you got? <laughs> I wish I could. I'm, I'm obviously a hitter in my past, but I loved what Javier did going out there, getting a career high in strikeouts with nine. And I agree with Gooby. He set the tone early because it was a rough road trip, and they needed to snap that funk they were in, and he brought it tonight. One ball and one strike to count to Jordan Alvarez. High fly ball into center. And there's one gone. There's Yuli Guriel. You know, I started uh, down this road earlier, and uh, I think game action prevented me from finishing the thought, but we just saw that shot of Carlos Correa enjoying a uh, natural potassium break in the dugout. And he's, he's rocking the sleeve roll up thing, the cutoff kind of, if we can see it there, he's like rolling up the bottom of the sleeve and he's cuffing it, right? A little bit of the gun show going on. Appropriate playing the Angels kind of uh, tipping your cap unwittingly to the great Brian Downing who mastered the cutoff sleeve to show off the guns. Nobody did it better. Superman. Was that his real nickname? Yeah, well, as strong as he was, yeah. He was a uh, he wasn't he stood right on the plate dared you to try to get him out inside and uh as all pitchers remember, if you're in a uh, uh, hitter's book, I'm in his book, too. Brian Downey got me one time. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that well. <laughs> Brian Downing was jacked before guys were jacked. Those are some good ball clubs that you're talking about. And I grew up in Southern California watching a lot of those California Angel teams. Brian Downing actually came out and threw the first pitch at our Little League when I was a kid. Oh, that's cool. Walsh making the catch on that fly ball to God. Well, you remember that one highlight play out in left center field with his Fred Lynn and Brian Downing oh, going yeah. for the ball going towards the wall? Isn't that lucky that Fred Lynn was able to avoid major contact with Downing? That would have been a real big uh, issue for Fred going forward. That was a violent collision out there. There's Kyle Tucker now with two gone. Yeah, there's that there's that famous catch Freddie Lynn made uh, during his rookie of the year run in 75 where he collided with the outfield fence at Fenway. I, I think he would have come out in worse shape had he collided with Brian Downing <laughs> than with an actual fence. <laughs> The ball and a strike to count to Tucker. Hey. Ryan Presley up in the bullpen. Unscored upon to start the year. Little excuse me check swing. He went around on the appeal. The ball and two strikes. Certainly not a safe situation here for the Astros, but Presley hasn't been in a game since Saturday. And an opportunity for Dusty to get him some work at the start of this series. Three more between these two teams here in Houston. Zach Granke and Andrew Heaney tomorrow. Jake Odorizzi, Griffin Canning on Saturday. And then Lance McCullers, Astros fans hope, will take the ball Sunday to wrap things up against Dylan Bundy for the Angels.
2 2 pitch is sliced in the air. Long run and a great sliding catch by Jose. No, that's. Is that Iglesias? No, that's Rojas who came out of the shift. What a fine play. That, believe it or not, is just the second 1 2 3 inning of the game on this side of the scorecard. Last chance for the Angels as we go to the ninth. I'm Robin Sanders and I'm here at Minute Maid Park in front of the recently completed fan appreciation mural in center field. We were busting our tails to get it finished day in day out and then to finally get to the, the end process where the unveiling it was kind of surreal and just being there um, not just a, a bystander but a participant of the of the unveil with with the media, the executives, the unveiling just capped off what was a great, great project. Now that the mural is done, I'm just really happy that I got to partner with the Astros on the mural as well as the three Art Institute students. They were absolutely incredible. To the top of the ninth inning, last chance for the Angels tonight, down by six. Hey, coming up on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Next up, Twins and Indians, a day game from Cleveland. Got the Braves and Nats on the schedule. Good battle from the NL Central in Milwaukee. Giants and Reds, who seem to have played each other a lot already this year, in action as we speak. Uh, or just finishing a series. And the Phillies and Marlins coming up at the end of May. Another afternoon affair Thursday, May 27th. Three exclusive games only on YouTube all year long. It is Ryan Presley on to put the finishing touches on what the Astros are hoping is a series opening win against a division rival. And on the first pitch to Kurt Suzuki, Presley gets a ground ball out. Last time out for Ryan Presley up in Seattle. He picked up his first save of the year. Like Matt said, has yet to give up an earned run. Pitching in six innings this season. He is another guy with that high spin fastball, but he has two wipeout secondary pitches with a power slider and a power curveball. One out base is empty now for David Fletcher, who got his first base hit of the game in his most recent at bat. The Angels hopeful that Mike Trout will be OK to play tomorrow but that's certainly something that people will be watching closely overnight and tomorrow morning. I know that the Angels beat writers are certainly looking for information another knock for Fletcher a knuckleball sent out to right field. It did a right turn again for, <laughs> for Fletch. Thing of beauty. Wow. Yeah, it was almost like a Kenley Jansen cut fastball we saw the other day closing out a game. That had some cut action going the other way. Fifth plate appearance tonight for Shohei Otani, who has been quiet this evening. 0 for 4 so far. In a more comfortable at bat against a right handed pitcher where his OPS is 200 points higher. Over 900 versus right handed pitching just over 700 against southpaws. Yeah. 
and did not swing the bat. A couple other games going on right now, guys, and that uh, big series between the Dodgers and Padres has resumed. First of four between those two rivals. And San Diego has a 2-0 lead at Dodger Stadium in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rookie Ryan Weathers throwing the ball very effectively for San Diego tonight. Boy, they've been some great games so far. Almost playoff atmosphere already. Yeah, no love lost between those two teams this year. That, that Each of the three games in San Diego last weekend was chippy. Rio fastballs in for a strike. Yeah, those games against L or for LA against San Diego are very enjoyable to watch. I'm still amazed at how good Dodger pitching is. Some of the guys that they have on their starting rotation absolutely amaze me, and I'm not sure how guys get hits off them. Yeah, that depth is going to allow them to do exactly what they've stated their their goal is and they're going to start to borrow the NBA term they're going to start the load management phase of the season in June <laughs> where they'll go to a six man rotation on occasion they'll pull a guy out they'll bring somebody up from the alternate training site and Otani strikes out man he was in front of the count three and oh and then took two big cuts at upper 90s gas to came up empty. He likes that high fastball as a left-handed batter, too, but he couldn't catch up to this one there from Presley going fastball upstairs at 96. Four seamer gets it by him. Ooh. Last chance for the Angels is Scott Shepler. He has struck out and grounded out since coming onto the ball game and replacing Mike Trout, who again earlier was hit by a pitch in the elbow. The ball that mercil mercifully hit him in the pad, but still Mike was removed as a precaution with a elbow contusion tonight. Houston a strike away from a series opening victory at home. Maybe it's the home cooking Blummer. They win six of seven to open the season ran rough shot over the Oakland A's. Since that series fortunes of both teams have changed a little bit and the Astros are hopeful that they're back on track tonight. Yeah it's got to feel good to get back home in front of their home fans hear the cheering and to put up a big number here at home they haven't done that yet this year. That'll do it with an exclamation point and a 95 mile an hour fastball. Ryan Presley remains perfect to start the year. And the Astros post an 8-2 victory at home. Congratulations to Dusty Baker. We talked about how he was on the doorstep of the 1900 club. He enters access tonight. 14th on the all-time wins list with his 1900th managerial win tonight. Eight to two the final. The MLB YouTube Game of the Week post game show presented by Chime starts right now. The Astros with an 8 to 2 victory tonight. They take the series opener. Some timely offensive performances, multiple hit nights for guys like Carlos Correa, Alex Bregman, name brands cashing in tonight, and Christian Javier with an outstanding night on the mound. The Lone Angels highlight was the home run by Albert Pujols, 
one that just scraped the fair pole in right field his first opposite field homer in the better part of two years and the limited capacity crowd that came to watch this series opener tonight for the most part is exiting the building happy after an eight to two win for the home side. We are awaiting a conversation with our chime player of the game tonight. A little drama to reveal who that is. You had a vote in this watching at home. And between Carlos Correa, Alex Bregman, and Christian Javier, we will reveal the winner of our player of the game honors and have a conversation with that Astro coming up shortly. I think we've got the winner in place. He is Christian Javier, a career strikeout high, a career pitch count high, and a dominant night on the mound in his first start in two weeks, Gooby. Yeah, I thought his stuff was off the charts. He had the four-seam fastball going, but his slider was a difference maker. Going into the game, I think his key was to be able to finish off with his slider. Well, he certainly did that with nine strikeouts and five innings. Dusty Baker said before the game they were going to hope to stretch him out a little bit as far as pitch count, and he was right on the money on how well he threw tonight. Christian Javier is our player of the game, taking down the vote by a 45% to 33% margin over Alex Bregman. Man, it is way too early, Jeff Blum, to jump to any conclusions about who's truly hot, who's truly, who's truly not. Uh, you know, not until the 40 game mark do a lot of us think you can really get a, a sense for what you have on the field. But based on the start the Astros had, winning six out of seven, based on how good they look tonight, we expect them to be in the fight all year long. No, and they should be, and they have the pedigree to do it. You've seen it in the past. We talked about it in the open, how they've been to the postseason. They've been to it four ALCSs. So these guys understand how the season works. They understand that it is going to be a little bit longer season this year. So I think you're going to see less panic out of these guys. But also, when you start out in a season in April, you want to put good numbers up. You want to get off to a great start. They had that for a week when they went through the Oakland A's. All of a sudden, they faltered a little bit when A.J. Hinch and the Detroit Tigers came through, got beat up a little bit, kind of took it on the chin and then they had a couple of guys go on the injured list and I think they started to reel a little bit and realize that they might be in a little bit of a tough spot but these guys have rebounded out Altu they're waiting to get Altuve back they're waiting to get guys like Framber Valdez back so things can trend in the right direction but considering the way things have been for the last 10 days this was a very welcome home for them you know and for the Angels on the other side of this thing Mark Gubiza you go a long way to beating the Angels when you keep Shohei Otani and Mike Trout quiet and that's exactly what what Christian Javier and company did tonight. Yeah, when you look at the power threats, you got Otani, Trout, and, and Jared Walsh. And for the most part, Javier and the, the bullpen for the Astros did a great job as far as neutralizing that, especially with the break of all throughout the entire game. David Fletcher wasn't able to get on base early in the game as much as we're used to seeing for the Angels. So, I mean, when you look at this division right now, guys, this is a very competitive division. And a lot of people are saying, well, this is going to be a weaker division coming in. But the Oakland A's have been great. Seattle's been really good. Texas has played pretty solid baseball. The Angels have. And now the Astros, you know at some point, will start to play really good baseball. And this is going to be a fantastic race all the way to the end. When you go back and uh, kind of scrutinize the start of Alex Cobb tonight, you know, he, he, was, he was close. And again, like Javier, who actually pitched at the alternate training site, uh, it had been a while for Alex Cobb since he was last on a big league mound. Ten days, a long layoff, had a start skipped. Um, I, I think he was good, and I think the difference for him tonight, I, I sound like a guy belly aching here, but the 1-1 pitch to Martin Maldonado. He got two out in the third. 1-1 pitch to Maldonado was called a ball that, that was not. It was a strike. That at-bat turned into a double. The floodgate opened. It turned into a three-run inning. And Cobb was out of the ball game before the end of the third. It's it's a matter of how one call, one pitch, can kind of betray your night. I felt like he was on the verge of pitching out of it a couple times tonight, but couldn't get out of that final jam. Yeah, you're exactly right on that. Every once in a while, you need a pitch or something go your way to be able to go out there and put up the numbers you expect. But I still go back to what we talked about at the very beginning. When you're a sinker ball pitcher and you're too strong, you're going to overthrow some pitches. I didn't think his splitter was as good as, as it has been. His knuckle curve was really, really good, but his fastball had more lateral movements than a sinking movement. I think that's where he ran into some problems. Not a lot of ground ball action for him. 
I just think him down to it. I would be curious to see what he said after the game that he was too strong and maybe overthrew some pitches. You know, we have our player of the game standing by with us with the help of a translator, and congratulations to Christian Javier. A terrific night tonight, Christian. Thanks for joining us. Tell us how you felt tonight and what you felt was working the best for you this evening. Le puedo decir cómo te sentiste en el juego y qué estaba trabajando el mejor esta noche. Si pudiste hablar que cómo te sentiste esta noche y qué estaba trabajando el mejor cosa esta noche. Ahí se la pregunta. ¿Me puedes oír? Que se cerró la pregunta ya. Sí. Oh, me sentí muy bien, gracias a papá Dios. Gracias a Dios por todas las bendiciones y la salud que me da. Me sentí súper bien, todo me pichó de, por encima de la zona de atrás, de calidad. Y gracias a Dios pa, todo poderoso pude ejecutar temprano la cuenta y siempre estaba cayendo encima de, del conteo con el primer pichó de atrás. No, all thanks to God for all the success tonight. Uh, I felt good. I threw quality strikes over the plate uh, and I felt comfortable tonight and uh, success is to God. Thank you. It how was it, you know, when you go into a game, you're preparing for a team that has Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, and Albert Pujols in a lineup. How were you able to stay so focused and be able to throw all your pitches in the strike zone, like you said? ¿Cómo te manteniste enfocado en la zona cuando estás enfrentando jugadores como Mike Trout y Albert Pujols y Shohei Otani? ¿Cómo sentiste y cómo pudiste estar en la zona eh, contra los jugadores de eso? No, simplemente me mantuve enfocado y tratando de hacer todo lo posible para caer encima por, con el primer picheo de try y pensando que si le caía de try el primer picheo la cosa se me iba a ir siempre a mi favor y gracias a mi poder yo pude hacer el ajuste For me it was just about staying focused uh, getting the first pitch over the zone for a strike if I can command the zone early in the count and get ahead then the rest of that bat it was in my favor El Raptil, great game today. Tell me what it felt like to watch the Astros offense go out there and put up runs while you were pitching so good. ¿Cómo te sentiste cuando el equipo de nosotros pusieron carrera pichando contra ellos? Muy bien, muy contento, muy contento. Gracias a Dios, no pudimos tener la ventaja y todo iba marchando a mi favor. Y eso me ayudó a tomar un poco más de confianza y a seguir atacando la zona. No, super happy with the hitters. It's a, uh, it's a lot less pressure when the offense comes through. I feel a little bit more relaxed and can attack the zone a little bit more. Well, uh, please relate to Christian that it was a pleasure watching him pitch. By the way, sir, translator, thank you for your help today. What is your name? I, I, I feel like we should, we should know your name as well. <laughs> My name is Derek Vigoa. Derek, way to go. Thanks for helping us out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you for the guys. translation and uh, boy, Derek. congratulations. That was great. Awesome. All right. Good. We've Good got team. a player of the game. It's a bull tonight. 98 pitches, nine punch outs. Both of those numbers are career highs. All nine of them swinging. We're going to take a break and we'll have more post game coverage when we come back right after this.
Welcome back to our Game of the Week post-game coverage, powered by, presented by Chime. An 8-2 win for the Astros, taking game one of this four-game set with division rival the Los Angeles Angels. And if you missed any of the play-by-play -play coverage, here's how it went down. Yeah, Blummer, uh, Javier was down at the alternate site. This is his first big league start in a couple of weeks, but that was all by design, we understand. David Fletcher, Shohei Otani, and Mike Trout for the visiting Angels. The strikeout for Javier. Two strikeouts start the game for Christian Javier. Pretty nasty changeup. I'm actually kind of curious to see this matchup between Christian Javier, who has that good fastball in the upper portion of the zone. Jared Walsh has the reputation of being very good on hitting the fastball and driving it. He gets a lot of swings underneath. Just like that. Three strikeouts, nothing comes with the two out walk underway in Houston tonight. Christian Javier mix in a ground out, dude. All six via the swinging strikeout. And here's Miles Straw now. Sharply hit past the third baseman Rojas into the corner. That's going to get Diaz around to score. Miles Straw driving in the first run of the night, and it's 1-0 Astros. A ball into the short left field corner. Then he turns into a triple. Two balls and two strikes to Correa. Ground ball that trickles through the infield and allows Straw to score easily. Boy, that's a two strike count that just got away from Cobb. Big plate appearance here for Yuli Gurriel. Base is loaded. Here's the 3 2 pitch. And he just missed with the split change. Man, didn't miss by much. An RBI for Gurriel is team leading 9 3 0 Astros. Kyle Tucker. A strikeout victim to end the first. And that's lined into shallow right where Fletcher had him played perfectly to avoid any further damage. Oh, oh, last year. oh man, he got hit in the elbow, and I don't know that that got him. There's no pad there, I don't think. Yeah, he has a little protection there right around the tricep area, but that looked like he got him right in the elbow. Ay. Ay. I thought it was a slider, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't pick up the ball here, though. No. His, his stuff looks like that, too. I think it's going to happen. Yeah. Mike Trout has come out of the ball game after being hit in the elbow a couple of innings ago, tried to stick around. Scott Shebler has taken over in center field for him. Here's Alex Bregman now. He's been on base in all three of his plate appearances tonight. Two singles, and he was hit by a pitch in the second. Another base hit. Man, he and Correa are going nuts at the top of this order. Carlos is going to score, and the Astros are on the board again. Pools to right field. That's got a chance if it stays fair, and that one's gone. Albert Pools to the opposite field to get the Angels on the board in the sixth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All boundary calls are reviewable. Yeah, it's going to stand. He knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where the final score would end. 9-2, or 8-2, rather, Astros. Is a Ryan Russell came on his dominant tonight. Man, he has not allowed a run this year. And looks to be in 2018-ish uh, form. So here's the final numbers and eight to three, eight to two victory for the Astros eight runs on 13 hits two runs on eight hits for the Angels. The big note for the Angels is that Mike Trout left the game in the fourth after being hit in the elbow as you saw. The word out of the Angels clubhouse was an elbow contusion. Good news that there was nothing further and uh, his status of course will be evaluated for the rest of the series. Hey you know as we welcome you back in uh, Matt Vasquez with Mark Gubazad Jeff Blum we talked about some of the exit velos here guys. You know, not everything was hit on the screws, Gooby, as it were. No, I mean, but, but you're putting the ball in play. I mean, they, they, not a lot of strikeouts for them. Contact, sometimes soft contact. No real baseballs hit over that 100 mile an hour mark we're so used to in Major League Baseball. But to their credit, two, both these teams use the high contact team. They score eight runs today. That's the most since April 4th. 
So it's pretty impressive to see what they did with Carlos Correa at the top of the order. Dusty Baker decided to make that decision to put him at the top. First time in his career, and it paid off with a lot of help at that top of the order and balance throughout the entire lineup yeah, for the Astros today. Yeah, Blummer, they, they might have a hard time getting Correa out of that leadoff spot. He seemed to <laughs> like it. Uh, the final results seemed to like it. Maybe that's your new leadoff hitter until Altuve's back in the mix. Yeah, they definitely needed a shakeup, and Dusty Baker wanting to go out there and get that get that 19th, 100th win. He went out and got it today by having Carlos Correa at the top. And you talk about really, like, shaking things up. I don't think Correa was one of those guys they anticipated because in the past he's been a 4-5-6 hole type hitter where he gets – the opportunity to drive in runs, has a high risk number, drives the ball out of the ballpark, has some key moments. But we talked about it earlier in the game. You want guys at the top of your lineup to get the most at bats. And Carlos Correa is one of those guys that has been swinging the bat very well. He's got a keen eye. And he also has a, an opportunity to put your team up early with the power that he has. Very similar to George Springer, who left to go to Toronto. One of those things that Dusty Baker was wondering about with us before the game, who's going to lead off. We got Correa in there. You know, Dickie Thon not available. Uh, Cesar Cedeno not available. Biggio's in the front office now. They found him. Uh, Brett, and that lineup construction worked out really well tonight for the Astros. Boy, it certainly did. And even though Christian Javier was our player of the game, we started this telecast talking about how the Houston Astros needed to win, they needed some offense, and they got both today. In their previous four games, they had eight runs. They got eight runs tonight on 13 base hits. Two-thirds of the lineup was on base at least multiple times, combination of hits or hits and walks. Alex Bregman had the three base hits. That certainly was a bright side as well. And this is still a team waiting to get Jose Altuve back healthy. They hope productive. Jordan Alvarez has not played much at all over the last couple of years, so there's another guy they hope to be able to build towards over the next couple of months. And you guys talked about it. Oakland's won 11 straight. They may come back to earth. What's the staying power for the Seattle Mariners? The Angels obviously would like to get Rendon back. Astros would like to get Altuve back. So this could be a wild American League West race the rest of the year. You know, Lance Berkman, though, was a guy who played a lot of games on this field behind me, and Blummer probably knows this. Lance was always fond of saying a hitter is only as confident as his last game or his last couple of at-bats. So at least for tonight, this Astros team probably goes home feeling pretty good about themselves for the first time in probably about a week. Well said, Brett. Great stuff. Uh, you bet. Let's take another break. An 8-2 win for the Astros. And we're back with more on our postgame coverage presented by Chime. Coming up next. He has been the MVP of our season. Continues to be the most underrated player on our roster. Runner goes, and it's a ball. Throw down to third. Out at third base. What he's been able to do and how he's been able to help our young pitching staff through the season, he's just the uh, you know the rock of this team. And his his will to win, the grit that he has, uh, is something that I admire a lot. Maldonado will drive this to deep left center field. Home run, Maldonado. Big moment for the Astros and Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker. Pitch on the way. And Tucker hits it high in the air to right field. It sends back four. Ooh. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Our post-game coverage is presented by Chime. Eight to two Astros in this series opener tonight. Three more to come against these two teams starting tomorrow. And the hope for Angels fans is that Mike Trout, after being hit by the hit by a pitch in the elbow tonight, is okay to continue. Mike wore a mic for us, and here is Mike on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Massage? No. Dude, I honestly thought it was a slider, buddy. I didn't even see it. That's what I thought, Diaz. Yeah, I thought, thought it was thought a slider. Because you put like your elbow down like Bro. it was a slider. You good though? Yeah. Sorry. Right. Don't come up. <laughs> I'd love to see you hit. <laughs> I see you talk about the new map. The new map? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't played it tonight. I thought one. it was a slider, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't pick up the ball here, bro. You know what I mean? So I like, I kind of like was waiting for it to break. And dude, if I didn't, I don't think if I had my pad there, if I didn't have a pad, bro. Yeah, Mike Trout would come out of the game shortly thereafter. Uh, we talked about this a little bit during play-by-play, -play, Gooby. The fact that he hits only 218 here, uh, you know, those are not Mike Trout numbers in any ballpark. So lowest of any major league stadium right here in Houston. Yeah, I mean, every other ballpark, especially any other ballpark in the AL West, he has incredible numbers, but there at Minute Maid Park, he's really had a tough time seeing the baseball. And by the way, I just saw that Joe Madden said he expects Mike Trout to be in the lineup tomorrow, so that's good news for the Angels fans and any baseball fan to see Trout back in the lineup. But this doesn't see the ball real well. He wasn't able to determine if it was a slider or even a fastball today for Christian Javier when he hit him in the elbow. So hopefully Mike Trout will be back up there and get a little bit better swings and see the ball a little bit better down there in Houston. Yeah, Blummer, you talked yeah, about... Yeah, first of all, I agree. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry to jump in, man. I, I, first of all, I agree. I, everybody wants to see Mike Trout out there swinging the bat and putting up big numbers. But here at Minute Maid Park, it's kind of interesting to have him mic'd up and be as open as he was, talking about his inability to see the ball here at Minute Maid Park. We talked about the batter's eye being a little bit different, the LED lighting. And I've had several conversations with Jeff Bagwell talking about the days back at the Astrodome where guys would come in and have to adjust to the lighting in those ballparks. So it's kind of unique that this is one of those ballparks that gives him trouble. And maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the 10th man for the Houston Astros when Mike Trout comes to town because that seems to be the only kryptonite this guy has. Yeah, watch what will happen. He gets drilled in the elbow today. He's going to come out there tomorrow and hit three dingers and, you know, so oh, yeah. much so much for I can't see the ball at Minute Maid Park. We've seen that movie before. <laughs> you know what else we saw tonight? Uh, yeah, it's limited fan participation, but our fan of the night, third inning, slicing foul ball. Check this dude out. Epic fall. Ah! Oh. And he lived to tell about it. He was all smiles afterwards. Thanks for being a good sport, sir. <laughs> hey, elsewhere on the uh, on the falling fail docket, Monday in Philadelphia, <laughs> Brandon Belt gets a hold of one and it rattles around. And look at this! Hey! Oh! <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like he was wearing skates, ice skates. <laughs> like three-time Stanley Cup champion Ken Danico right here in New Jersey. Oh! <laughs> oh, he gone. <laughs> Ken, got Ken, Ken got a little too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Super Bowl. <laughs> Straight fear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a good thing I don't have to work on the oh, hockey I side. I don't know how Ke I, if Kenny is uh, happy with us for that, but uh, you know, that's, <laughs> oh. that's Mr. Devil. I, I, I know but he can mix it up a little bit. So glad we're uh, pretty far away from him as we laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I managed. Thank goodness for social distancing. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, and thank goodness for social media because now those clips will live forever. Uh, before we go, we want to remind fans of the rest of this package, the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. These are exclusive games that you can't see anywhere else. And the next one is coming at you Wednesday the 28th, six days from today. Day game between the Twins and Indians at Progressive Field. Got the Braves and Nationals, Cardinals, Brewers, Giants and Reds. And the Phillies and Marlins then coming up uh, Thursday, May 27th. Hey, the Twins and Indians is an interesting matchup, guys, because uh, there are a lot of people that felt like it was the Twins and White Sox division to lose. Cleveland is without uh, Carlos Carrasco, without Francisco Lindor, but it's a pitching factory there, and any staff that's still got Shane Bieber on it, for me, has a puncher's chance. I think they think that they're every bit the competitor in that division, along with the White Sox and Twins, Gooby.
Yeah, they got some great pitching. And when you look at how many home runs they've hit, they don't have a you know a really deep lineup, but they've hit a lot of long balls. They score some runs that way. But their pitching staff, a young pitching staff, is so good. But Byron Buxton, by the way, for the Twins, one of the best players in the game. It's good to see him back out there. He was not available in the Angels series, but I'll tell you what, he does incredible stuff out in the outfield. Great throwing arm, power, and speed, elite speed. We talked about Otani. Buxton has that elite speed as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. They've got Byron Buxton, who was a second pick behind Carlos Correa, who's really come into his own. He was a swing and miss guy early, but it's been great to watch him make the adjustment and start to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Always been a gold glove center fielder for me from the time he stepped on the field. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch that division match up a little bit. Great pitching for Cleveland. And, of course, the ageless wonder Nelson Cruz out there dropping bombs still. Yeah, it's the Minnesota Twins looking up at the rest of the division, oddly, off to a wonky 6-10 and 10 start. Kansas City, the team to beat right now in the AL Central, setting the pace with a 10-7 and 7 record. Guys, this was a lot of fun tonight. Uh, thanks for doing this, and uh, I had a blast working with you guys. been a long time that we've all known each other, and we finally got to do a game together tonight, so it was fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Matt Blummer. You guys are great, man. It was a blast hanging with you guys. And I finally got on the field for the first time the- in two years down here at the field. <laughs> you want you want to do some running and show it off for us? I mean, you could rip off the headset and run the bases, no? No. No. No, they won't let me do that right now because I'll have to show off my athletic skills. <laughs> No, thanks for having me on, guys. It was great seeing you guys. I miss all of you. Can't wait to see you in person, and thank you for breaking me in gently. And thanks to Brett Dolan as well for his contributions tonight. Uh, Good times, everybody. It's a wrap. The Astros take game one of the series by final score of 8-2, to the next MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube, presented by Chime. Wednesday, April 28th, the Twins and Indians from Cleveland. For Mark Gubazad, Jeff Blum. And Brett Dolan, Matt Vasturgeon saying so long. Thanks for watching.